हमारे मैनेज एडिटर इन चीफ संजय पुगलिया लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन मे आई प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट यू टू राइज फॉर द नेशनल एंथम जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे It's our great pleasure to have the vice president here with us and I would like to invite our editor in chief Sanjay Pugalia to address the gathering. Thank you. Uh Bharat ke uprashtrapati Adarniya Jagdeep Dhankar ji aur yahan upasthit sabhi ganmanya atithi gan आप सबों का बहुत बहुत हार्दिक स्वागत है एन इंडियन ऑफ द ईयर कई वर्षों के बाद री हो रहा है और एक नई चमक दमक और एक नई परिभाषा के साथ ये सामने आने की कोशिश कर रहा है जिसमें हम उन भारतीयों को जो कि ग्रास रूट से लेके अंतरिक्ष तक काम करते हैं कमाल करते हैं छलांगे लगाते हैं उनका सम्मान कर सकें और उनके प्रति अपनी देश की एन के दर्शकों की कृतज्ञता ज्ञापित कर सकें आपने हमारे लिए वक्त निकाला उपराष्ट्रपति जी इसके लिए आपका बहुत धन्यवाद और हमारे लिए ये बहुत अहम घड़ी इसीलिए है कि जब से एन का नया प्रबंधन हमने संभाला उसके बाद से दो चैनल के बाद हम अब पांच चैनल के एक नेटवर्क बन गए हैं करीबन सात हमारी वेबसाइट है और ये हमारा फ्लैगशिप इवेंट वापस शुरू हो रहा है आपकी मौजूदगी में आपके सानिध्य में ये बहुत बड़ी बात है हमारे लिए जगदीप धनखड़ साहब का जो एक बायोडेटा होता है अगर मैं उसमें न भी जाऊं तो दो तीन बातें बड़ी उल्लेखनीय हैं और जो इनको नज़दीक से जानते हैं उनको इस बात का काफ़ी अंदाज है उनको पता है कि पिछले चौंतीस साल से मैं इनका जैसे ऑब्जर्वर रहा हूं तो ये देखता हूँ कि इनकी विद्वता न सिर्फ संविधान या कानून के क्षेत्र में या रूल ऑफ लॉ को किस तरीके से गार्ड करना उसमें इनका जो एक रेबिलियस अप्रोच है उसके लिए सब लोग पूरा जुडिशियल सिस्टम पूरी लीगल फ्रेटर्निटी इनकी तरफ देखती है और इनसे समझना और सीखना चाहती है सबसे कम उम्र में सुप्रीम कोर्ट के सीनियर एडवोकेट बने थे और इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट ऑफ आर्बिट्रेशन में बहुत सक्रिय सदस्य के रूप में बरसों तक उसमें काम करते रहे उन राजनीतिज्ञों में से हैं जो ग्रास सूट से आते हैं लेकिन कम उम्र में एमएलए बने फिर एमपी बने फिर मंत्री बने फिर गवर्नर बने और अब उपराष्ट्रपति और राज्यसभा के सभापति हैं और इन दो पदों में जो पिछले दो पद हैं अभी वाला और गवर्नर वाला पद उसमें हम लोगों ने ये देखा है कि इन्होंने इन दोनों दफ्तरों को इन ऑफिस को रीडिफाइन कर दिया है एक नया आयाम दे दिया है जो लोग नज़दीक से जानते हैं वो ये भी जानते हैं कि विट और विजडम के ये महासागर हैं जिनको भी इनसे इंटरेक्ट करने का मौका मिला है वो इनके विट से या तो प्रशंसित हुआ है या उसका शिकार हुआ है यही कह करके इनका परिचय मैं यहाँ समाप्त करना चाहूँगा और फिर से कहना चाहूँगा कि आप हमारे लिए आज यहाँ पर आए हैं ये बहुत बड़ी बात है बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू सो मच संजय थैंक यू फॉर दैट इंट्रोडक्शन विष्णु Well uh, it is as i mentioned um, a big day for NDTV it's the NDTV Indian of the year event uh, it's back since 2005 um, was when uh, we actually launched it but it's back this year um 
2005 was the first ever NDTV of uh, Indian of the Year event. The event has become synonymous with recognizing those Indians, individuals, organizations, and institutions who've contributed to the idea and identity of India in one way or the other, whose contributions to the country have strengthened the foundation of our society. The awards have recognized the unsung hero in the same breath as the most celebrated people. Our focus has always been on exceptional work. NDTV has truly been the grandest stage to honor extraordinary Indians since 2005. And it is to honor extraordinary work that we gather once again to celebrate the Indian of the year. The Indian of the Year. May ek bar phir ikatha ho kar hum sab ko bhot garv hai, bhot khushi hai. Is award ne na sirf unhe samanit kia hai, jo jaane maane hai, jinko hum sab jante hai, jinhe dunya pehchanti hai. Balki unko bhi puraskrit kia, jo kahi gumnam rehte hue, behtereen kam karte rehi. Parde ke piche, jinki kam ko samne lana hamari zimmedari thi. Our unsung heroes. Hamara maksad rehta hai, behtari in kaam ko pehchan dena. 2005 se, NDTV wo sab se bada manch bana, jaha hum in bharatiyon ko sammanit karte rehe hain. Aur ye hamare liye aaj bohat garf ka pal hai, ki hum ek baar phir ikatha huye hain, Indian of the Year ka utsav manane. We are delighted to be partnering with Punawala Fincorp, co-powered by Ambuja Cement and ACC, our associate sponsors, Darwin Platform Group, of companies and games 24-7, and our special partner, Motorola. We thank them very much for being a part of uh, this wonderful occasion. Thank you so very much for giving this award to me. It feels great. I'm honored to receive this prestigious award. This is a real privilege. तो ये थी एक झलक इंडियन ऑफ द ईयर की अब तक और हम शुरुआत करते हैं आज के इस कार्यक्रम का हमारी पहली कैटेगरी है अवार्ड्स की जो बेहद खास है इंडिया फर्स्ट अवार्ड इंडिया फर्स्ट अवार्ड वो पुरस्कार है जो उन्हें दिया जाता है जिन्होंने देश को आगे रखा देश के हित को सबसे आगे रखा और विश्व पटल पर दुनिया के सामने देश का नाम रोशन किया ट्वेंटी and Indian foreign policy, a policy which merges India's economic and social agenda with an international vision which reinforces our standing as a trusted and committed partner of nations around the world. India's focus is clearly India first, which means independence in our thinking and a quiet determination not to be drawn to any blocks or power centers. I'd like to call upon Sanjayji to actually uh, open the envelope and uh, start the proceedings in naming our first award of the evening. India first award, Shri Amitabh Kant. Amitabh Kant is India's G20 Sherpa. He played a pivotal role during India's presidency last year. Mr. Kant is a governance reformer and um, a public policy change agent for India, having driven policy reforms uh, in our country uh, and uh, been involved in initiatives such as uh, the Niti Aayog and so much more. इनको स्टेज आता है स्टार्टअप इंडिया मेक इन इंडिया इनक्रेडिबल इंडिया जैसे लोकप्रिय और कामयाब इनिशिएटिव्स का इन्हें कामयाबी दिलाने के पीछे हैं श्री अमिताभ कांत केरला गॉड जोन कंट्री और एस्पिरेशनल डिस्ट्रिक्ट प्रोग्राम को साकार करने में भी ड्राइविंग सीट में रहे श्री अमिताभ कांत
बहुत शुक्रिया आपका अमिताभ कांत जी बहुत शुक्रिया और अगली कैटेगरी जो अगली श्रेणी है अवार्ड्स की वो है हेल्थ लीडर ऑफ द ईयर यानी कि स्वास्थ्य के क्षेत्र में अभूतपूर्व और अनोखा योगदान जिन्होंने दिया है उन्हें पुरस्कृत करने की बारी है इंसानियत की निस्वार्थ सेवा के साथ इस क्षेत्र में लीडरशिप देने वाले को सम्मानित करने की बारी है we honor those who have made ground breaking contributions to protecting and promoting health we acknowledge the lifelong dedication and selfless service of humanity that such leadership clearly demands may i request sanjay to announce the name of the winner health leader of the year dr yasdi italia जाने माने माइक्रोबायोलॉजिस्ट पद्मश्री डॉक्टर यजदी इटालिया जिन्होंने सिकल सेल अनीमिया बीमारी के खिलाफ दो दशक से एक जंग छेड़ी है गुजरात की जनजातियों को इस बीमारी से बाहर लाने की उन्होंने अथक कोशिश की है और ये कोशिश उनकी जारी है ये उनका डेडिकेशन है जो कि सिर्फ अवेयरनेस कैंपेन से आगे बढ़ा है Dr Italia has dedicated his life to fighting sickle cell anemia his life serving work and tireless efforts have contributed to the government's mission of eliminating sickle cell anemia by 2047 his leadership has not only saved countless lives but also brought national recognition to the plight of tribal communities battling sickle cell anemia earlier this year he was honored with the padma shri बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और अगली कैटेगरी लाइफ इन इंडिया लाइफ इन इंडिया अवार्ड यानी पर्यावरण के अनुकूल जीवन शैली यानी लाइफ प्रधानमंत्री ने कॉप ट्वेंटी सिक्स में इस विचार को सामने रखा और जिससे हर व्यक्ति को प्रो प्लैनेट यानी प्लैनेट के भले के लिए कुछ करने को प्रोत्साहित किया जाता है लाइफ और लाइफ स्टाइल फॉर इन्वायरमेंट दैट्स वॉर इट स्टैंड फॉर It's a public movement to mobilize individuals to become pro-planet people. Our next award, the Life in India Award, recognizes those people who are doing their bit to fight climate change through sustainable lifestyles and community engagement. Once again, Sanjay ji has the privilege of opening up the envelope and announcing this very very important honor. The Life in India Award goes to Minakshi Gadke. Minakshi Gadke has turned Mukra into a model village for 408 gram panchayats in the state. The vermicomposting of their wet uh, waste earns them revenues through the sale of fertilizer to other villages. The profits have been used to install two rooftop solar grids that are enough to make the village एनर्जी सेल्फ सफिशियंट मुखरा गांव जो है विष्णु उसमें वेस्ट सेग्रीगेशन से गांव ने सात लाख रुपए कमाए और इन्होंने चीफ मिनिस्टर रिलीफ फंड में एक लाख डोनेट किया मीनाक्षी जी ऑल्सो हैज रोप्ट इन द कम्युनिटी टू प्लांट वन लैख फ्रूट बेरिंग ट्रीज ऑन द रोड साइड एंड प्रोमोटेड द यूज ऑफ इको फ्रेंडली कटलरी इन वेडिंग्स अमंगस्टर अदर इनिशिएटिव दैट्स अ कमेंडेबल कमेंडेबल वर्क दैट मीनाक्षी जी हैज बिन डूइंग अ बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्लॉज फॉर हर The development of Indian science, new ideas, often new engineering and solutions are now increasingly being seen around the world as being world class in India from pharmaceuticals to space cutting edge research the bedrock of science is being encouraged but while so much more needs to be done to encourage genuine research it is time to honor some of our great science champions bilkul waqt hai ki hum apne vaigyanikon ko sammanit kare vigyan ki duniya mein nayi unchaiyan chhune walon ko sammanit karti hai hamari agli shreni science icon of the year aur sanjay ji se guzarish hai ki wo envelope khol ke winner ka naam announce kare Science icons of the year: M. Shrikant, R. P. Vira Muthuvel, K. Kalpana, Nigar Shaji. The year 2023 will undoubtedly go down in history when, as the year when India's space agency demonstrated incredible prowess and resilience in the face of challenges, the pinnacle of ISRO's achievements in 2023 was the successful first ever soft landing of Chandrayaan-3 near the moon's uncharted. 
southern, southern polar region and India's first solar mission Aditya L1 in September. Or Aditya L1, Chandrayaan 3, the South Pole per land karna or skir rahme ane wali jut tamam chunotiyati unko bina ruke, bina juke, par karneki piche jo chere hai, unmese kuch chere yaha pare is kamyabika ke jo rachna kar hai, wo ye hai, Dr. Shaji, Dr. Vira Mutuvil, Dr. Kalpana, or Dr. Shrikan. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप सबका गुजारिश है कि आप अपनी अपनी जगह लें और अगली कैटेगरी जो है अगली श्रेणी जो अवार्ड्स की है विष्णु वो है बिजनेस लीडर ऑफ द ईयर अवार्ड द इंडियन ऑफ द ईयर अवार्ड्स ऑनरिंग बिजनेस लीडर्स कम्स एट अ टाइम व्हेन इंडियाज इकॉनमी इज ट्रूली अ शाइनिंग स्टार अमंग नेशंस अराउंड द वर्ल्ड एंड आउटलायर इफ यू विल अ बीकन ऑफ होप आवर बिजनेस लीडर्स हैव एडेड इमेंसली टू द इंडिया स्टोरी बाय सस्टेनिंग इनोवेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट एम्ब्रेसिंग टेक्नोलॉजी एंड बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस बिल्कुल और ये वो कैटेगरी है जो अवार्ड है वो दिया जाता है ऐसे बिजनेस लीडर को ऐसे नेतृत्व के लिए जो लगातार बिजनेस के क्षेत्र में इनोवेशन और डेवलपमेंट लेकर सामने आते रहे हों वंस अगेन कैन आई आस्क संजय टू एक्चुअली इनवाइट टू ओपन अप द एनवेलोप एंड टू इनवाइट द रिसिपिएंट Business Leader of the Year Award goes to N. Chandrasekharan. And to receive the award on behalf of Mr. N. Chandrasekharan, the chairperson of Tata Sons, we have a wonderful guest we'd like to invite on stage, K. Kritivasan, MD and CEO of TCS. <laughs> Tata Sons chairperson N. Chandrasekharan is one of India's business icons. Under his leadership, 2023 has been a transformative year for the Tata Group. Absolutely. The group's footprint in the consumer business has grown exponentially and the combined market capitalization of the Tata Group companies increased nearly double the rate of the Sensex. Mr. Chandrasekharan has sent us this very special message. for selecting me for this honor. The Tata Group has been going through a significant transformation over the last few years. All Tata companies have embraced the megatrends of artificial intelligence and energy transition. We also fully recognize the need for a global resilient supply chain and India's role in creating that resilient supply chain. The Tata Group is spearheading this movement and has committed itself by making significant investments and foray into such sectors. Apart from our traditional sectors and the companies that we have been running for several years, recently we have pivoted towards electric vehicle mobility, new energy in wind and solar, and we announced our first semiconductor fan, India's first in Dolera recently. We are also creating the first indigenous assembly unit for semiconductors in Assam. The group has also forayed into batteries and we are building a lithium ion battery facility for 20 gigawatts in Sonam. The group also is producing the technology for 5G and beyond. All of this 
is possible because of the 1 million employees today we have it is their ambition hard work and energy that is making it possible so this award belongs to all of them i also want to take this opportunity to thank the government of india under the leadership of prime minister narendra modi who has made development as a key focus and thereby driving economic growth and improve the quality of life for all citizens the group is seized of this opportunity and has pivoted very decisively in india once again i want to thank ndtv and wish ndtv all the very best for this year and for the years to come ये थे एन चंद्रशेखर और बहुत बहुत बधाई इनको इस सम्मान के लिए अब मैं आग्रह करूंगी माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति से कि वो आप सबको संबोधित करें आग्रह करूंगी कि वो आपके अपने संबोधन के लिए आए good evening all of you i'll start with a disclaimer i know sanjay pugliya now for 40 years i have seen his transition from hindi print media to english print media i have seen his transition from print media to television i know the entire family too well so please the sentiments he expressed should be taken with pinch of salt <laughs> i say so otherwise there may be many caveats we have in the audience apart from the awardees very distinguished people i need to make reference to them former chairman sebi uk sina ji a remarkable human being brought expertise to his job sri gopal jain a distinguished senior advocate well educated and doing a good job i know sushil rungta former chairman sel for 58 years his presence compromises my ability to address you but i'll pick up some courage then coming to padam vibhushan the one and the only one am zadali khan ji sir you are a source of inspiration source of motivation and the handicaps i suffer because of presence of others are more than neutralized by you <laughs> though mr amitabh kant is an awardee but i came to learn about mr amitabh kant when i was governor state of west bengal people remember me because mamta ji was chief minister there but i remember my tenure also apart from mamta ji mr amitabh kant and i'll tell you why i was heading a group of 10 governors we had to formulate a policy of ease of governance he was then in niti ayog a remarkable human being very innovative result oriented and his contribution helped me greatly on behalf of other nine governors to formulate a good report but then we tend to forget but well, let us go to 2023 he was involved with an assignment that had potential fault lines that could have compromised his career organizing g20 was not easy organizing p20 was not easy he came out with sparkling colors 
there was no hiccup anywhere. India was recognized globally that we organized P20 so successfully, it became a role model for others. I know him. Well, this is an age where you must not ignore the younger generation. Doesn't matter if he happens to be son of your friend, Mr. Vipul Rungta, he has made his mark in his own right. I know him since birth. I look up to him on issues that matter greatly. And last, not least, I was elected to parliament in 1989. Mr. Casey Tyagi, I came to know him. And ever since then, we have been in touch. Casey Tyagi brings in politics a fresh air. He is antidote to adversarial behavior. He has no enemies in politics. I have admired him on numerous occasions. We were in the same political party. When I had the good fortune to be a minister, the first thing I told him, you deserved it. I got it by accident. Friends, it is a delightful moment for me to be part of NDTV's Indian of the Year event. I'm still wondering why they stopped it in 2015. I was part of governance in 1989. That was beginning of coalition governance. We had more than 20 parties. I was a junior parliamentary affairs minister. In 2014, after three decades, the country came to have single party majority. I thought it was a good occasion in 2015 to continue the program thereafter, it was not. But I'm happy and delighted. It is back on the rails. And in a lighter vein, so is our Bharat, home to one-sixth of humanity. We are back on rails. <laughs> Warmest greetings and wishes to all for a joyous and colorful holy. This is going to be very different because we never imagined, at least me and Mr. Tyagin, in 1989 to 91. We had to suffer the pain that to sustain our financial credibility, physical gold of this country had to be airlifted to be placed to two Swiss banks. And now I am told there may be a week where foreign exchange addition may be more than 6 billion, and it is now over 600 billion in total. So we face those changes. My congratulations to distinguished awardees. I can tell you, all of them have earned it. They well deserved of it. And when you have an award like this, then awardees become a source of inspiration and motivation for many others. It carries a stamp of credibility. Something that happened with respect to our civilian awards, Padma Awards. If an award is driven by patronage, if iconic status is generated by event management, then it doesn't have acceptability. I congratulate the jury for having chosen people who have really contributed to the growth rise of this country. This award will inspire many to join our marathon march for a Vixit Bharat at 2047. Friends, the reverberation of Vixit Bharat is palpable in every corner of our great nation today. 
it is more than just a call to leapfrog into the future. It is a definite promise. It's a firm promise that in 2047, we will be a developed nation, meaning thereby none will be left behind. The development in this country in last decade has been plateau, not pyramidical. The benefit has accrued to one and all and in every nook and corner of the country. Recent years have been a testament to India's journey from fragile five economies in the world. Fragile five. We had the good fortune to be in the big five, leaving behind Canada, UK, and France. It is a matter of time, and I can say less than two years, the country will be big three economies of the world, ahead of Germany and Japan. So our Amrit Kal, which from every consideration is our Gaurav Kal, in a sense, laying foundation for a developed nation in 2047. National mood in the country is one of hope and possibility. And why not? We have seen unprecedented economic rise. Those who claim to know economy, who were part of dispensation, and who thought <clears throat> and put it in public domain that rise will not be more than 5.5%, did not respond when the rise was over 7.5%. Then we have exponential infrastructure growth that is envied by the world. Bharat Mandapam, Yeshobhumi, new building of parliament, our expressways. Just imagine where we are. Even from a global benchmark, we are in big league. Then, well is spread out digital penetration. The benefit is available in the village. In tier two cities, people are reaching to a level where they never imagined. They are reaping dividends of it. And then upsurge and emergence of new vistas and opportunities. Our young people today have an ecosystem where they can exploit their energy and talent their potential and realize their aspirations and dreams. Affirmative governance has made it possible. Friends, when we look at the world affairs, India's image was never that high, and it is rising. G20 will be remembered for epochal accomplishments. African Union became a member of G20. India became voice of Global South. I can keep on going. Many achievements were there. The entire world witnessed 5,000 old civilizational culture of this country. This is where we are. India in the world is the only constitutionally structured democracy that is at all levels. At the village level, at the municipal level, at the state level, at the central level. We have robust judicial system. In such a situation, we are obvious. I emphasize, India is obvious pacemaker for global peace and harmony. Friends and Mr. Sanjay Puglia, in such a scenario, Media is imminently suited to be an agent, to convey right perspectives, to understand India, rather than be prey to orchestrated narratives seeking to taint, tarnish, and demean our image and institutions. It is something which media needs to reflect and take proactive steps. 
democratic values optimally blossom and flourish when there is equality before law, when there is accountable and transparent governance, where patronage, nepotism and favoritism have no space. There was a time when these three pernicious tendencies dominated our working. But that, soothingly, is a matter of the past. Privileged pedigree has disappeared. Equality before law is writing on the wall. Those who thought they are immune to law, they are above law, they are different than others, have realized it to their pain. What can be greater pain to a human soul, young boy and girl, living in the largest democracy, that some people are more equal than others, they are more privileged? That system has gone. In the process, morale of, of our youth has gone up. Friends, global institutions earlier used to treat us the way they treat our neighbors and other countries. Get into reformist mode, take care of your economy, you need to understand this kind of working. What a big change. All global institutions without exception are praising India, applauding our growth, recognizing our historic achievements. Take any area, IMF, they say we are a bright star in global economy. We are favorite destination of investment and opportunity. World Economic Forum has expressed confidence that India will be a developed nation in 2047. India is at the cusp of immense possibilities. It is no longer a nation with a potential or a sleeping giant. It is on the rise. The rise is unstoppable. The rise is incremental. And the growth story transcends beyond skeptics. All this is because the country has affirmative governance policies, visionary leadership, a determined leadership that sees nothing but execution. And the execution is in the shortest time and a ground reality. Inclusive development with un unwavering perseverance. Just imagine if these steps had not been taken. Where would have been today? Look at the pandemic COVID. But earlier to that, there was a massive banking inclusion. Can you imagine 500 new bank accounts? People have not seen a bank. They thought it was difficult for them to have an account. They had. I don't wish to go to other social parameters, like every house has a gas connection, a fresh water tap, it has or it is on way to getting it, a toilet, every village has a center where you can ensure delivery. Lines have disappeared. There was a time people used to take chutti. I'm sure Amitabh Kanji, you must have felt it. Aaj mujhe chutti leni hai kyunki mujhe bizli ka bil jama karana hai. Aaj mujhe chutti leni hai ki passport ki application deni hai. We have transformed. We are in the big league, league of nations that have availed technology for rendering services. And this has contributed massively to transparent, accountable governance. India, friends, and media in particular takes, needs to take note of it. We are amongst few countries in single digit that are extremely alive to the power of disruptive technologies. Our quantum computing commission is in place. Green hydrogen mission. Allocation has been made of 6,000 crore for the earlier one, 19,000 crore for the second one. In artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, 
our focus is there. Gone are the days when we used to wait that technology will be developed in the West. We will be in the queue to get it. They will decide how much we get it. Circle is complete. India is now epicenter. India leads in harnessing these technologies. Media in such a scenario is an important factor. A great stakeholder in promoting these affirmative changes. It can contribute massively in building great Bharat, a Bharat of our dreams, foundation of which has been laid down in Amrit Kal. No nation, and now I'm coming to what media needs to do according to my perspective. No nation can grow without unflinching, steadfast, emanating from hard commitment to its nationalism and culture in all its facets. The spirit of nationalism must be deeply embedded in our thought process. How can we countenance some people compromising our nationalism? I appeal to media through you. You are an important media house. Economic nationalism is quintessentially fundamental to growth. If Bharat practices economic nationalism, just imagine we will save in billions drain of foreign exchange. Correspondingly, employment will be generated here. Entrepreneurship will blossom. If industry, commerce, and business decide the raw material will not leave our shores, there will be value addition. Things will go a long way. Media can do a great job. Media is, India, media is has a cutting role in imbibing the spirit of economic nationalism. Let me tell you, and everyone will agree with me, no fiscal gain can justify compromise of economic nationalism. We should not import an item which is available in the country. We need to subscribe to Subdeshi, vocal for local. The moment we get an item manufactured in this country from outside. We do it only for fiscal gain. We must not yield to this temptation. Media today shapes public opinion, disseminates information, and wields influence over social discourse. It is main pillar of society and country. As fourth pillar of democracy, media credibility lies solely within its own control. It should be effective, and there ought to be no hindrance in its way while upholding high standards. Its smooth functioning is a collective responsibility shared by media, government, and society. Friends, media serves its cause best by being objective and not getting involved in politics. We know the ground reality. I will not reflect more on it. It should take all care and precaution so as not to become a battleground for partisan politics. Media cannot be a platform for free fall of untenable information. It damages our democratic fabric. It shatters individual reputations. It destroys institutions. If you start floating information without due diligence, it can wreck our economy, social fabric. How can we have a vibrant, robust democracy like ours that media will give wings to any kind of misinformation? It has to be neutralized, and that I'm sure media should be doing. We are living in times where public is extremely aware. Informed public is the spinal strength of democracy. Misinformation can be ruinous. Media is a natural watchdog to contain and curb such free fall of misinformation and falsehood. 
If media does not do it, then who will do it? There is urgent need for media and media houses to reflect and have a mechanism in this direction. Fearless, informed, independent media is the safest assurance to nurturing democracy. Let me tell you, I'll come make one reference only. Citizen Amendment Act. Debate is taking place. It is in high decibel. It is orchestrated. And situation is crystal clear. Citizen Amendment Act does not deprive any Indian citizen of his or her citizenship. Citizen Amendment Act does not entitle any man or a woman presently living outside the country to get its benefit. Citizen Amendment Act is a reprieve to those persecuted who are in this country for more than a decade, and there are several decades also for some. Now, if you go by ethos, India has been a century, a place for those who have been persecuted over centuries, and an impression is generated differently. Media in such a situation has to play its role. Why role is not being played in proper perspective? Because partisan alignments. It is good to speak from a platform that media's ethics is this, but people practice it. I'll be quoting more trouble if I get into more details. And a smile by Mr. Amitabh Khan says that it is good to be discreet on occasions. Media cannot be a registered, recognized, or unrecognized political party. Media has to do its job. We saw a decade ago some people in the media leveraged decision-making of a high caliber. It went to the extent of positioning in the cabinet, in the government, Media should not be a power broker. Media has only to do its job. Fourth pillar of democracy is also accountable. I appeal to everyone in the media. We are having a bar today, home to one-sixth of humanity. The world is looking at us. The world is looking at us with hope, optimism, and confidence that Bharat is a stabilizing force. We have a visionary prime minister who has been invited by both the parties to a conflagration. We are vindicating our age-old ethos of peace and harmony. I am sure media will engage into self-regulation. I will apply, appeal to media in particular. Our young journalists in the villages, in tier two towns, in states, are doing a great job. They are excellent. They are human resource of unrivaled nature. India has a large category of veteran journalists. This group constitutes a global think tank. By and large, our journalists are ethically oriented. They are passionate about their work. When everything is right, how can pudding be spoiled by some? And that media should come forward by your self-regulation. Friends, tonight we came together to recognize the Indian of the year. And I can tell you each one of them merits it. Let us not only applaud their achievements, but also recommit ourselves to the values they represent, integrity, resilience, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Let me tell you, it is not easy 
to be Indian of the Year. If you are doing outstandingly well, your peers are not kind to you. They will be a epicenter to handicap your working through several ways. You can be collaterally damaged. If in such a scenario and challenge, if people have performed, it is our national duty to applaud them, praise them. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, NDTV, for providing a platform to shine a spotlight on these remarkable individuals and organizations. Together, let us continue to build a stronger, more prosperous, and more inclusive India. And I can tell you, in conclusion, we are proud of our institutions. Executive, the world recognizes India's ex executive prowess, led by Sri Narendra Modi. The world recognizes power of our Indian judiciary, robust, effective, expeditious, independent. The world recognizes power of our legislature in states and in parliament. I therefore appeal to the fourth pillar of democracy that is performing well, but to come to that level, to be in sync, to ensure that marathon march of every Bharti, marathon march for Bharatiya 2047 succeeds beyond our imagination. Thank you so much. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका सर और मैं एक बार आग्रह करना चाहूंगी हमारे तमाम अवार्ड विनर्स तमाम उन लोगों से जिनको पुरस्कृत किया गया है कि आप मंच पर आएं एक तस्वीर के लिए उपराष्ट्रपति अवार्ड विनर्स हु हैव बीन ऑनर्ड सो फार कम ऑन टू द स्टेज फॉर अ फोटोग्राफ एंड अ फाइनल सर्व ऑफ मीटिंग विद द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट कम प्लीज यू आर ऑल आर रियल हीरोज दिस इवनिंग A big round of applause for all of those who've been honoured so far by the Vice President of India. Thank you. Thank you so much and congratulations ladies, once again. Very big congratulations. congratulations. Uh, once again. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I take this uh, occasion to request you to once again please rise for the national anthem of India.
ladies and gentlemen, we request you to keep remaining seated as uh, Sanjay ji escorts the Vice President of India out of this uh, hall. There's a lot more on Indian of the Year coming up. More awards for some of India's finest. So do stay seated as we carry on with this ceremony. Wonderful conversations as well coming up. Our colleague Gargi Rawat up next. A very warm welcome once again to all of you, the NDTV Indian of the Year. And this year, the evening is all about celebrating and honoring women, everyday women, working women, women in leadership roles, women who run homes and care for their families, women breaking gender stereotypes. What these women do every single day gives a big push for women to be granted equal and a full voice participation and leadership everywhere and in every aspect. And that is what we celebrate tonight. In 2023, the women of India excelled in every field, from boardrooms to playgrounds, from villages to, uh, to space centers as well, and from health centers to the parliament. And we are very lucky to have many of these remarkable women with us here today. We will be introducing them through the evening, and we start with the trailblazing banker who shattered glass ceilings, one of India's most renowned women leaders, Nana Lal Kidwai. Nana Lal Kidwai has several firsts to her name. She was the first Indian woman to get an MBA from Harvard in 1982, the first woman president of FICCI, and the first woman to head a foreign bank's operation in India. She started her career at a time when there were very few women in boardrooms and she had to overcome gender biases on many levels and thereby establishing clearer paths for other women. She established herself as a formidable leader in banking, serving as CEO of HSBC India and later Group General Manager and Country Head of HSBC India and Director on the boards of HSBC Asia Pacific. She works for several causes that are very close to her heart, environment, sanitation, access to water, women's empowerment, to name just a few. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for, Lela, for Nena Lal Kidwai. I'd now... I'd now like to call on stage Manoj Gujran, Chief Compliance Officer and Head Legal and CSR, Punawala FinCorp, to come on stage, sir. Alright, we'll just wait a few moments uh, for uh, Mr. Gujran. He might have just stepped out for a moment. And through the evening, we'll be honoring the remarkable women who are in the room here with us. And 2023, as we said, is about the women of India.
to bear Gargi. with us in just a moment. Mr. Manoj Gujran will be coming here to give the welcome address. Gargi, if you allow, can I take over? Sure, Arun. Hi, a very warm welcome. Uh, my name is Arun Singh. And of course, we are honoring the best here, best Indians here. But what's the point of, you know, honoring them? What, why are they working? Why have they been putting their best to get that joy, to get happiness, right? So we'll just do something lighthearted and uh, have some fun conversations here as we wait for our esteemed guest, Gargi, only if you allow. Shall we proceed? Go so, ahead. okay, very quickly, there is one word which has been overused by poets, especially romantic poets. Can you guess, sir? <laughs> Dil. Dil. Sure, sure. Any other word? One word which has been overused by romantic poets. By, by poets? Or? Yeah, yeah. Love. 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 Anything else? We've got Dil, we've got love, of course, because it's romantic poetry. But Arun, can you really overuse love? Well, <laughs> no, you can't. But there is one word which I didn't get from you guys. This, that's Chand. Right? Moon. I mean, I'll go to Chand, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. But no one has gone to Chand. Our Isro scientists, please a huge round of applause for them. Only if you allow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have just very quick, fun, light-hearted questions. Because we want to see the other side of you. My first question is, of course we see you in that joyous moment every time you achieve that feat. But what is the unwinding sessions like? How do you guys celebrate, is what my first question is. We celebrate uh, with family and friends. No, I, I want to know what is the party like? We, our party life is very minimal. <laughs> very minimal. <laughs> that goes the same for you, ma'am? Exactly. Like sharing and uh, our moments with friends and family is the way we celebrate. Okay. Any, any space-themed movie that you like? Sir, I'll go to you. Any space-themed movie that you, that, that is your favorite? So the Mars, Mars one of the film was a favorite movie. Okay. And if there was a film to be made on Chandrayaan 3, who would you want to see in the film? <laughs> I'll pass on this question to Madam. <laughs> Very convenient. We'll go to the ladies. Ma'am, please. Who would you want to see? Deepika Padukone. Deepika Padukone. Congratulations, Deepika Padukone. Well, there has been a suggestion right from the horse's mouth. And ma'am, you, what would be your name? Uh, before name, yeah, it's a very potential subject for a good movie to be done. Yeah. Uh, whoever does it, I wish them all the best and it should be portrayed in the best of this survey, both the direction as well as the cast. So that's what I expect. Okay. Mm. What about you, sir? I'm the Bachchan. Wow. <laughs> that's a big name. Let's have a huge round of applause on that. Can I, can I call him? Of course. In the end, I'll just close this with one superpower that you would like to have. Of course, you have one, which is science, and we've seen the example of it. One superpower that you wish you had. Harmony. 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 How sweet. Huge round of applause for ma'am. What about you, doctor? Oh, like uh, proper balancing. Okay, you, sir? Time management. Lastly, you, sir? Uh, harmony is the, is the best answer. Lovely. Thank you so much. Can we have a huge round of applause for our scientists who actually made going on the moon absolutely a reality and wo waqi jo shayar jis chand ki baat karte hain unhe unhe ye lekar aaye hain and i Thank now toss so back to you gargi Thank you guys. That was a lovely little interlude and uh, we hope Chandrayaan 3 does get made that film and Deepika Padukone agrees to act in it. I'd now like to call on stage Mr. Manoj Gujran chief compliance officer and head legal and CSR Punawala FinCorp. Thank you so much, sir, for the welcome address. Thank you, Gagi. Good evening, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be here today at the NDTV Indian of the Year Awards. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji, for gracing the occasion. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to the Honorable Minister for Railways, Communications, Electronics and Information Technology, Sri Ashwini Vaishnavji, for gracing the occasion 
with his esteemed presence despite the busy schedule. I would also like to thank all the esteemed dignitaries, honorable union ministers, and chief ministers of various states for attending this event. I also express my gratitude to Sri Sanjay Pugliya ji, Sri Santil ji, and the entire team of NDTV for organizing this event. This is a great initiative by NDTV, which honors extraordinary Indians from various fields who have truly made a remarkable contribution and have had a profound impact on the nation. They have not only strengthened the foundation of our society, but also helped bring, build brand Bharat. I congratulate all of them who will be awarded this evening. Since this event is all about celebrating the great achievements of people who have made India proud, I would like to take a moment and thank our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, for transforming Bharat. Under his visionary leadership, we have come a long way on the global economic platform and are at the cusp of becoming the third largest economy. Digital India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, Make in India, Startup India, and the Atal Innovation Mission are some of the great initiatives of our government, which are fueling inclusive growth and promoting the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship. Honorable Prime Minister's far-sighted approach has propelled India to be a global hub of manufacturing and technology, harnessing the power of digital solutions. I would like to laud the work of Sri Ashwini Vaishnavji. Under his dynamic leadership, we are seeing the transformation of Indian railways like never before. And the way he is guiding the nation and working tirelessly towards making Bharat a design and manufacturing hub of semiconductors, which is a true testament to Atmanirbhar Bharat. I am confident that Bharat will be a global chip powerhouse soon and is heading towards the right direction in achieving the Honorable Prime Minister's vision of Vixit Bharat by 2047. At Pune Hall of Incorp, we believe in enabling the dreams of millions of our customers who are contributing towards the growth of the nation. With deep investment in technology and innovation, we strive to create endless possibilities each time and partner in the growth journey of our customers. Trust, integrity, transparency, and excellence are at the core of our institution. Poonawala FinCorp is a compliance resilient organization with focus on good corporate governance. We are leaving no stone unturned in building a robust risk framework with the integration of technology and innovation. Our vision is to be the most trusted, ethical, and transparent financial services brand and help individuals and businesses achieve more by offering best-in-class customer-centric products and solutions. As I conclude, I once again thank NDTV for conceptualizing this magnificent event and allowing me to share my thoughts. My best wishes to all the awardees for the future. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for those words. बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आपका और आपने ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव इंडिया की बात की तो आज हम बदलाव की शक्ति के रूप में भारत और भारतीयता का समारोह मना रहे हैं हर जगह ये बदलाव देखने को मिल रहा है और इस बदलाव की ताकत हम महसूस कर रहे हैं हमारे लोकतंत्र में जिसमें अलग अलग समुदायों का सशक्तिकरण हुआ है हमारी तकनीक में भारत की डिजिटल क्रांति में खेलों में और विचारों की दुनिया में भी और सबसे ज़्यादा बदलाव ये देखने को मिल रहा है जो शक्ति है महिलाओं की उसमें Well tonight we celebrate India as a transformative power the transformative power of democracy in empowering communities the transformative power uh, of technology the transformative power of ideas and of course India's digital revolution um, amongst the biggest transformations in fact that the world is seeing I am delighted to call on the stage Ashwini Vaishnav Minister for Railways Communications Electronics and Information Technology Come sir, let's have a, a quick chat and thank you so much for being with us. Come. Hi, how are you? Great. Wonderful to have you, uh, Minister, with us today. Same here, man. Why do, why do we in India need to have such a strong base in semiconductors? Okay. 
Good question to start with. Listen, semiconductor basically forms one of the foundational industries. Practically everything that we manufacture today and practically everything that we use today has semiconductors in it. Um, to put it in a very simple way, everything that is switched on, switched on and switched off has some chip in it. So if we want to grow our manufacturing base, if we want to be Atmanirbhar in manufacturing, Atmanirbhar in uh, our supply chains, have resilient supply chains, we need to have semiconductor. Now, we have a very strong semiconductor design ecosystem in our country. So it's very natural that the next uh, item in the value chain, which is semiconductor fabrication, and the third one, which is semiconductor ATMP, all the three parts of the value chain must be there in the country. And who else is better positioned than us? We have huge talent, close to 30% of the global semiconductor talent is in India. Yeah. Recently, I'd gone and met about uh, uh, 45 odd semiconductor companies. Practically every company, the CTO was an Indian expat in the valley. Right. Every, practically every R&D organization in semiconductor industry is run by Indians. Why shouldn't we have the semiconductor industry here in India? We should. Sure. And this is something which our country has been trying for more than four decades. The first attempts uh, were made in early 1960s, 1962, 65, 70s, then 80s, then 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Practically lots and lots of efforts were made and finally it is yeah. Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji who has succeeded in getting it. And it's said to actually take off in a huge way. One of the most interesting themes now is, of course, artificial intelligence. But then with the use of AI, whether it's in apps, there is always a danger. We keep talking about deep fakes. There is also policy which is required. Um, tell us about your concerns about the ethical use of AI and what we in India are doing, what the government is doing to ensure that that takes place. See, AI has both uh, very good, uh, uh, lots and lots of benefits, and there are some serious risks serious concerns. And the whole, con whole construct of our internet today has to be seen in that. So the way we are working on AI is, one, we need to have very strong opportunities to be created for our youth, for our, sp uh, for our startups in the new emerging field. Two, there are many applications of AI, for example, in agriculture, for example, in pharmaceuticals, in bio, tech, in many, in uh, weather forecasting, we definitely would like to get the benefits of AI in these sectors. Three, the harms that can be caused to society, especially using deep fakes, uh, misinformation, that must be controlled and uh, I think we need a new law in this case. We, have, uh, we are uh, very widely consulting with the industry and stakeholders and right now we are in the election process. So I cannot say anything, but immediately after the election process, we must uh, work on a new law on this. You spoke about misinformation very briefly. Uh, the government has been trying to push fact checkers to um, government fact checkers to ensure that what actually exists online is fair, it's, uh, it's correct. But then there is criticism in a sense of that as well with people saying that should the government necessarily be fact checking issues which may be debatable and uncomfortable for the government. How would Absolutely you not. See, facts are facts, opinions are opinions. I'll give, you one, I'll give you one example. Recently, one of the opposition parties handles, they posted something on Twitter saying that uh, passenger, uh, uh, passenger transportation, passenger, number of passengers in Indian railways has reduced by 80%. Now, if somebody puts this kind of misinformation, how would you tackle it? You'll have to ask the Ministry of Railways what is the, what is the exact number, what is the accurate number. Yeah. If there is a question related to the central government, who is best placed to answer that question about the fact? Central government. If there is a question about NDTV, who's, go, who's best placed to answer Sanjay, that? Sanjay, he's sitting right there. <laughs> so it's NDTV, right? So our proposal and our notification was very limited, it was limited to facts related to data related to central government work. That has to be clarified by the central government. If there is something related to the state governments, then the state governments have to set up their own units. 
Unfortunately, that has been stayed by the Supreme Court. We respect Honorable Supreme Court's uh, orders, but I think it was very genuine and very well thought through idea of having one central government agency to clarify on items, on data relating to the central government ministries. I'd like to ask you now to put on your hat as Railways Minister. That's another increasingly high-tech area. One of the most um, sort of interesting and uh, areas which might result in huge economic benefits is the bullet train. We were talking about it a couple of months back. Uh, it's not really been in the news too much in the recent past. Where exactly is the bullet train and what are the economic benefits? The bullet train is uh, progressing very well. Um, as we speak, I think we have covered al almost 284 kilometers, eight uh, rivers, bridges we have completed, stations are on the verge of completion. The Maharashtra section also is now progressing very rapidly. The first uh, undersea tunnel work has already started. So the progress is very good. And we should not look at bullet trains simply as a transportation project. It has to be seen from integrating economies. I'll give you the example of Japan. The first bullet train in Japan was uh, commissioned in 1960s, 1969 or 1970. Um, if you look at that bullet train, basically starting from, let's say, Tokyo, Nagoya, Kyoto, Kobe, and Osaka, these five major economies, they get integrated into one economy. Same thing will happen in India in the first uh, corridor that we are doing here. From Mumbai, Thane, Wapi, Baroda, Surat, Anand, and Ahmedabad, all these economies will become one single economy. So you can uh, have breakfast in Surat, go and complete your work in uh, Mumbai, and come back and have dinner with your family in uh, the night. So that's the power of the call. And would uh, the fares undercut airfares? Most of the places, wherever bullet train projects have gone, practically bullet trains have taken 90 plus percent uh, transportation share. For example, in Japan, between Tokyo and Osaka, um, I would guess it is something like 96, 97 percent by bullet train and 5 percent by other yeah. boats. One of your biggest um, areas of focus uh, for you and any minister, of course, uh, you know, holding the portfolio of railways is safety. Uh, this is also technology intensive. Uh, there have been systems in place to ensure uh, that there isn't any possibility of two trains coming together on the same track. But that technology hasn't been fully deployed in quite the manner in which we would like. When they, would there be 100% compliance to make us all safer in the railways? See, um, in railway, most of the large railway systems of the world, they shifted to automatic train protection when the speeds started increasing from 70s to 100. Because when you're traveling at 100 kmph, then the uh, ability for a local pilot to see the signal physically reduces dramatically because one passes in a absolutely like a very small fraction of a minute. So around 1980s and early 1990s, most of the world's railways, they shifted to a technology called automatic train protection, ATP, yes. we call it in short. Unfortunately, the governments of that period, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, and 2010, those governments, they never cared about the safety of railways. It was in 2016 when the ATP in India was approved by Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. He approved it 2016. 2016 to 2019 certification process happened. Then of course COVID came, but still a lot of work was happening in parallel. And now we have very good progress to show, close to 4,000 kilometers of, and again, it's not like, uh, simply putting a device in a train. Mm. It's a very complex system. It is like setting up a complete telecom network along the railway lines, setting up many data centers along the railway lines, integrating with the signal. It's really complex. So our coverage system today, uh, we have done about 4,500 odd kilometers of uh, optical fiber cables. We have uh, done about 800 odd telecom towers already. Uh, about 600 odd uh, stations are uh, the data centers have been prepared, station signal integration has been done. Progress is very fast, very rapid, and the manufacturing and design ecosystem is also getting developed. So as we speak, it's like, it's, it's on the verge when we can see exponential rollout. 
One final question, going back to the entire issue of tech. Uh, India is seen as um, a startup phenomena in the world. Uh, we've seen um, a startup Mahakum taking place just day before yesterday. Um, one of the most uh, one of the most impressive aspects of this is that upwards of 45 percent of all startups now are led by women. Uh, how is this about empowerment at so many levels? Number one, women. Number two, tier two, tier three cities. It's not just an urban phenomenon, as it were. One of the good uh, parts of the startup policy is Startup India is that we have set up many distributed incubators, which basically means that incubators are not limited to uh, a few IITs. Incubators are now spread across the country in tier two, tier three cities. Then the way our startup ecosystem has evolved in the last 10 years, the focus has been on getting real solutions, focus has been on solving real problems. And India offers basically an opportunity to uh, solve problems at population scale, where else in the world will you get an opportunity to solve something at a billion plus scale, right? And our government has uh, always focused on giving equal opportunities to women, to equal opportunities to smaller towns. In a sense, if you look at it, the basic uh, construct of technology is to democratize technology. The way UPI was done. So for example, if you look at uh, technology in many other geographies, I wouldn't take any names. Technology is basically controlled by a few big tech. Whereas in India, we have created our Prime Minister Modiji's clear focus was on democratizing technology. Technology should be accessible to everybody. It should be open, uh, open ex openly accessible. It should be like uh, interoperable. So that's why most of the things that we have done, whether it is UPI, whether it is Aadhaar, whether it is uh, the, um, uh, the healthcare system that we are creating, whether it is the logistics platform that we are creating, all these are platforms where everybody can join and create solutions. So that is one of the reasons why we are seeing very good uh, traction in tier two and tier three cities and among all sections of the society. Are some companies potentially getting ahead of themselves? The reason I ask is because we've seen some big startups also failing financially now, cases against them, uh, financially floundering. In as much as we encourage this space and the sector, uh, do we need to be more cautious about what companies can and cannot achieve? Absolutely. For every business, for every enterprise, for every organization, it's very important to be uh, absolutely aware of what the legal constructs are, what the regulatory environment is, how the customers should be treated. All those things are uh, kind of basic, elementary. I think every business, whether it is in whether it's a startup or whether it's an established business, we should all be concerned and we should all look at all the, our, in a sense, our responsibility towards the society. Minister, it's been wonderful speaking to you. Thank you very much, Thank you, Minister, for being with us. Thank you very much indeed. Come. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been an extremely momentous occasion for all of us. Uh, NDTV, Indian of the Year, has seen the presence of uh, such incredible people who have done so much in their fields and taken India to incredible heights. And uh, one such person who's here with me to talk about her journey and what she has brought uh, to the table, uh, Suvarna Raj. Uh, Ma'am, first of all, NDTV, Indian of the Year, mein, First of all, uh, every one of us, we want to know about uh, a little bit about your journey, where it started, and what prompted you to get into sports. First of all, thank you very much. And if I talk about my journey, when I was two years old, I didn't know that I had polio. Mujhe polio hua hai. To suddenly, they said, परिवार के लिए एक मैं उस चीज को एक्सेप्ट करना बड़ा भारी पड़ गया था क्योंकि होता है कि आपके अगर चार बच्चे हैं और चार में से अगर एक बच्चा सडनली व्हीलचेयर पे आ जाता है तो कहीं ना कहीं वो पूरी फैमिली जो है वो मेंटली डिसेबल्ड हो जाती है 
क्योंकि अगर लड़की है तो सबसे पहला ख्याल जो माँ बाप के मन में आता है वो होता है कि शादी कब होगी या शादी कैसे होगी सेकेंडली अगर लड़का है तो इसका एजुकेशन कैसे होगा या फिर और भी बहुत सारी चीज़ें तो मेरे साथ तो डबल डिस्क्रिमिनेशन रहा है बचपन से ही मुझे आज भी याद है मुझे खुद को प्रूव करने के लिए मुझे मेरी एज के 33 इयर्स लग गए जब मैं 33 इयर्स की थी और मुझे फर्स्ट नेशनल अवार्ड बाय प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया मिला तब मैंने अपने पेरेंट्स को प्राउड फील कराया कि यस मैं भी हूँ कि आप ही का एक पार्ट हूँ और आप ही के जैसे तीन बच्चे और हैं वैसे ही मैं हूँ और मैंने भी ये प्रूफ करके दिखाया है कि यस मैं भी सोसाइटी में एक टैक्स पेयर बन सकती हूँ बिकॉज वी हैव अ वन करोड़ वोटर्स नाउ इन पर्सन विद डिसेबिलिटी सो मैं यही चाहती हूँ कि सोसाइटी जो है वो सिंपेथी की तरफ से देखे ही ना ना ही वो स्टीरियोटाइप जो सोच है ना बिचारा एंड बिचारी हम उससे कहीं बेहतर और कहीं आगे निकल चुके हैं जिसका उदाहरण हम सेट कर चुके हैं इन और चाहे इन पैरा ओलंपिक्स एंड ओलंपिक्स अगर हम दोनों का अगर वो करें कि ओलंपिक्स में अगर 19 है तो सात है तो पैरा ओलंपिक्स में 19 मेडल्स और एशियन में अगर 100 है तो पैरा पैरा एशियन में 100 एंड 11 है तो कहीं ना कहीं चाहे वो एजुकेशन का क्षेत्र हो चाहे वो कल्चरल हो चाहे वो कोई भी क्षेत्र हो अभी तो हमने दिखाया है कि कांट का टी हटाना और कांट को कैन में बदलना हमारे लिए कोई बहुत बड़ी बात नहीं रही है बस आपकी जो सोच है वो हमें चाहिए जैसे अगर हम स्मार्ट सिटी की बात करते हैं मैं एक्सेसिबल इंडिया कैंपेन के अंडर एक्सेस ऑडिटर भी हूँ एक इंटरनेशनल एथलीट भी हूँ इंडिया को अभी भी रिप्रेजेंट कर रही हूँ और मेरा सपना है एक ओलंपिक मेडल लेना और फुल्ली मेक्स इंडिया या फुल्ली एक्सेसिबल ये दो सपने के साथ में जी रही हूँ तो अब अगर हम स्मार्ट सिटी की बात करते हैं तो स्मार्ट सिटी के लिए मैं ये कहना चाहूँगी कि पहले सोच को स्मार्ट बनाइए सिटी अपने आप स्मार्ट बन जाएगी क्योंकि जब स्टीरियो साइप सोच निकल जाएगी तो आई थिंक हम उससे कहीं ज़्यादा आगे निकल पाएंगे A huge, huge round of applause, Sir Suvarna Raj. Uh, let's go uh, back to uh, Gargi and uh, Veera, who are uh, waiting for us uh, to take this forward. Thank Veera, you so much for you. that, Osama. And, uh, lovely to hear Suvarna Raj speak out uh, on all, all these issues. What a message! Yes, Think absolutely. smart to make smart cities. Absolutely. Well, our next category in this Indian of the Year function is Entrepreneur of the Year Award. That's right, Gargi. For a young and aspirational India, the quest is no longer about finding jobs as it was in you know, a few generations ago. It's about creating them, the ability and desire to take risks and chase a dream, no matter what the barriers. Is what defines the spirit of entrepreneurship. And to give the Entrepreneur of the Year award, I'd like to invite back on stage Minister Ashwini Vaishnav and uh, Senthil Chengal Varyan, uh, Executive Director, NDTV. And there, though. And the envelope, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Entrepreneur of the year is some guesses. Dipinder Goyal. Well, Dipinder Goyal, the man we literally think of when we're all hungry. Yes. Uh, an alumnus of IIT Delhi and the CEO of Zomato, one of the world's leading food delivery and restaurant discovery platforms. The man it's who over. delivers to a hungry That's India on absolutely. time. Absolutely, and uh, it's. 15 years old now this zomato and of course we order from it all the time and dipinder we Dip were wondering whether you would wear green or red today when you came for the function but you've come in white <laughs> very it's neutral in very safe but you know, you you know jokes apart success isn't uh, delivered on zomato it's uh, it's something that india is hungry for what's your message to a hungry young india which wants success of your kind um i come from a very small town in punjab so i think uh, the only message is no matter where you're born no matter what background you come from you can actually make it so wow. and i think this is just a start 
I also want to appreciate the fact that, um, you know, I, I know you were joking about what color you'd wear, but you made a certain announcement, and there was, a, there was criticism, there were a lot of comments, and you took it in your stride, and uh, you, you, you know, you then recalibrated. So that is something, if you could just tell us a bit about that, because that's something very special and very important in business leaders and leaders otherwise as well. I mean, we did a large survey saying what will make you order from Zomato Moore and this came up that we want a pure wedge fleet. Okay, and I mean the way we grew up, we don't know the meanings of these words and what is the historical context and none of our team actually knows this. So we are actually indifferent to this, right? And I think that's the purest form of letting go of any casteism, any religion, any biases, like we are actually indifferent to it. So, I mean, we just went on and did the change. But when we got the feedback, we actually understood that, okay, this makes sense, this makes sense. And we were actually on a Zoom call for the next <laughs> 20 hours just trying to fix anything that we needed to fix. <laughs> so, uh, in, in, on a lighter note, have you ever secretly used Zig Swiggy? I told him not to ask this question. <laughs> have you ever secretly used Swiggy? No, I have never. I've never. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> 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 yeah, Senthil said he should say what's that. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We move on now to our next category, Gargi. That's the innovator of the year. Absolutely. And Albert Einstein said, the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. And innovation is, after all, imagination, isn't it? That's right. It's the ability to imagine and innovate, perhaps, what will define us as different from robots and Gen AI in a world marching towards the unknown. And to give away that innovator of the year award, uh, We'd like to ask Mr. Manoj Gujaran to join us on stage. Okay. Innovator of the year is... <laughs> Piyush Bansal. Piyush Bansal transformed a small idea into a multi-million dollar company making Lenscart one of the leading eyewear companies in the country and uh, Veera and I both uh, have our Lenscart glasses as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good plug for Lenscart. He's also uh, a notable angel investor now and has been investing in several startups uh, if they catch his eye and are purpose driven and innovative enough. I don't know if you noticed, but we just pointed out we both have your lens card glasses and have them in many colors. But Yeah, it's a toss-up <laughs> between the pink and the gray. But uh, you've got a 10 on 10 in terms of vision and uh, eyesight. What's, what's perhaps the worst moment in the lens card journey? What's the best moment in lens card journey? And what's the lesson for the future? Yeah, there are many worst moments, I think, in an entrepreneurship journey. Uh, you, it's a roller coaster. You have good days, bad days. I think I remember we were moving to a new manufacturing facility and the tech systems kind of broke uh, uh, and we were changing tech and we were shipping four glasses for every order. And uh, so you were running out of inventory very fast. Uh, so that was a very tough moment and there were many orders we were not able to serve. So we literally stayed in office for about a week. Uh, living there and yeah in terms of the best moments I think they are yet to come we have a lot a long way to go um, uh, the vision for the future I think see I think this award is not just a you know celebration for lens card but a celebration of where India is at innovation and, as a country and we also appreciate the fact that now with your success, you're also looking at other startups and you're looking to fund them. And that's something that's so important in uh, you know, this yeah. India with so many yeah. young people and so many ideas. Yeah, and I think the, the, the conditions we have in India, the scale that we have in India, the challenges we have in India. Honorable PM Modi mentioned in the Mahakum the other day yes. that we have a cold region, we have a hot region, we have a high terrain, we have such 
all the variety of environments and the scale. Uh, and I do believe that necessity is the mother of invention. Right? So we have to work hard with the highest costs, highest rents, highest everything, and yet have to deliver that great service. So I do think our ability to innovate is just uh, so much better. And in India, this is happening at the grassroots level. I think today, we are, I am definitely privileged, we are privileged that we live in the metro cities and we get access to a lot of uh, capital. But I, when I go to the smaller towns, and this is what happens at Shark Tank, you see the, the, the level of resources that people are working with is just phenomenal. And every year, people are working with 10x lesser resources, uh, but, and at, but at 10x faster speed. Right? All right. Well, congratulations, and Thank I think you. a message there as well to the government. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Congratulations. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us. Well, once again, it's time to have uh, those tiny chit chats here with the members of the audience. My name is Arun Singh. Once again, those who have just joined with us is Minakshi Gadgeji. Bohat bohat taliya sabse pehle inke liye bajaye. Aaj, of course, inhe bhi samanit kya gaya hai. Ma'am, sabse pehle to bohat bohat badhai iske liye. Environmental ke kshitra mein aap kaam kar rahi hai. Aapne jo aapka jo gaon hai Adalabad mein, usse kis tarikhe se transform kiya hai. So let me tell you. सोलर पावर से बिजली आ रही है वहां वेस्ट सेग्रीगेट हो रहा है और वर्मी वर्मी कंपोस्ट से ये कमाई भी कर रहा है गांव सो so, उन सब चीजों के बारे में मैम से जानते हैं अगर आप बता पाए कहां से शुरू हुआ और आपके लिए सबसे बड़ा मोमेंट या क्षण कब था जब आपको लगा कि बहुत बढ़िया काम हुआ है मैं, मैं आज एन वालों को मेरा धन्यवाद मैं यहाँ पर आज उपराष्ट्रपति से अवार्ड ली हूँ मेरे मैं बहुत खुश हूँ मेरे गांव में मैं सरपंच बनने के पहले कुछ भी डेवलपमेंट नहीं था मैं सरपंच बनने के बाद एक एक काम शुरू कर दी तो पूरा काम अब तक पाँच साल में पूरा काम हो गया फर्स्ट पहला काम क्या करी तो मैं महिला मुझे सरपंच महिला हुई तो महिला का इस काम करी कुछ आ, कुछ महिला बाहर जाती तो तो उसके लिए मैं घर घर को टॉयलेट बना दिए है तो घर में सब यूज़ कर रहे हैं कोई भी महिला बाहर नहीं जा रही है स्वच्छता के बारे में हूर मेरा गांव फूल और झाड़ कुछ भी नहीं थे पहले मैं ऐसे झाड़ा लगाई तो पूरे रोड के दो साइड में गवर्नमेंट प्लस कहा है वहां तक मैं एक लाख पौधे लगाए ही लगाने की कुछ बात नहीं वो पौधे को मैं अब तक बचाई तो पूरे एक लाख दस हजार पौधे अब अच्छे से अच्छे है हम कहते हैं कि पौधों से बात करो तो वो ज्यादा अच्छे खिलते ऐसा होता है क्या ये मिथ है हाँ पूरा हरा पूरा हरा भरा है मेरा मुकरा गांव मैं इंडोर प्लांट से जाकर आज बात करने वाला हूं फॉर श्योर बट बहुत बहुत बधाई मैम एक बार आ, एक बार फिर से मैम के लिए जोरदार तालियां एंड ऑफ कोर्स वी हैव कुशा हियर कुशा के लिए भी तालियां हेलो कुशा हाय हाउ आर यू इट्स सो नाइस टू मीट यू की हाल चाल थॉट बहुत बढ़िया बहुत एक एक क्विक रैपिड फायर कर ले कुशा के साथ करते हैं ठीक है मैं आपको कुछ शब्द देता हूं जो भी आपके ज़हन में सबसे पहले आता है आप वो बोल सकती हैं उसके बारे में जीनतमान क्लासी इलेक्शन 2024 प्रिडिक्टेबल आईपीएल मस्ती सुनीति चौहान क्वीन स्नेक वेनम नो कॉमेंट्स थैंक यू सो वेरी मच कुशा के लिए जोरदार थालिया एंड बहुत अच्छा लगा आपसे मिलके एंड एक बार फिर से थोड़ी सी और चिटचाट कर लेते हैं बात कर रहे थे हम यहाँ पर आई आई कैंट सी दिपिंदर जी हैज ही लेफ्ट ओप एंड सो हैज पीयूष जी इज इट ओके नेवर माइंड वील वेरी क्विकली डू वन क्विक सेशन हियर वंस अगेन सो आप बताइए आपने नाम लिया कि अमिताभ बच्चन और दीपिका पादुकोण को आप देखना चाहते हैं अगर चंद्रयान थ्री फिल्म बनती है any acting aspirations that scientists have don't you want to play yourself of course i can try wow and how the confidence taliya ma'am ke liye doctor that's commendable we would love to see you act in chandrayaan 3 film and play yourself how about you doctor no something on the screenplay or something to do with the, uh, the overall making okay yeah 
that that's that's my interest okay. yeah and uh, do we have uh, nena lal kidwai here i've got a special request oh ma'am huge round of applause for nena ji hi how are you i'm very good thank you congratulations on the award thank you hmm. so i have a quick never have i ever segment where i'll give you situations if you have you can of course share and if you have any anecdotes as well that can also be shared can we do that I'm in your hands, and totally surprised. I have to add, it, it's the Indian version. I call it "Never Have I Ever" the Indian version because we are doing Indian of the Year. Never have I ever danced in a barat, like an Indian, like a true blue Indian. Yeah. Of course, I have. Yeah. So never have I ever. Yes, I have. Never have I ever eaten spicy food and pretended it wasn't spicy just to impress someone. That's something that a lot of Delhi people also do, na? Ye to kam ti kha hai. Uh, often, often, often. I, I don't lie about it. I don't like yes. spicy yes. food. Okay. Yeah. So, so I have to pretend very often. Never have I ever imagined myself in a Bollywood song. Uh, never, never imagined myself ever in a Bollywood song. If you were to, can you uh, mention one song? So how about Kajaria? Which hmm. one? Well, Kajare. Yeah. Lovely, great choice. Thank you so very much. A huge round of applause for Ma'am as well. And now I toss back to my lovely colleagues. Thanks, guys. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, Arun. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I am Sumit. Who is with me? And now we are moving to the next category. We all have big dreams. For completing these big dreams, we take many steps. But for any big step, we take many steps. And for any big step, छोटी छोटी कोशिशें और छोटे छोटे कदमों की बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरत पड़ती है इसीलिए तो कहा गया है कि समाज और देश को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए बड़े और छोटे हर तबके के लोगों की भागीदारी बहुत ज़रूरी है तो हमने यहाँ एन में तय किया कि हम भी भारत के नक्शे में छोटे से दिखने वाले जो राज्य हैं जो बड़ा सा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन करते हैं उनका बड़ा सा सम्मान करते हैं so it is time now for our next category and that is the best performing small state of the year to give away the award let me invite on the stage uh, padma vibhushan ustad amjad ali khan and uk sinha former chairman of sebi and independent director of the ndtv board Award, yeah. Ustad sahab, you have to announce it. Yes, sir. Best Performing Small State Award, Goa. Goa. And working on a five-point mantra to revive and transform the state of Goa, Mr. Pramod Savant actually believed in penny earned is penny saved. And working on that principal driver, he went on to revive the mining sector, the restructured loans and gave that much needed booster dose to Goa, something that only a medical practitioner like Mr. Savant could. May I please invite on the stage Pramod Savant, Chief Minister of Goa, to receive this award. Please come, sir. I would like to now call uh, Nikunj Garg, Senior Managing Editor, NDTV 24-7, on the stage for an interaction with the Goa Chief Minister. Please. Nikunj. Thank you, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Please. Thank you. Savan, first of all, thank you very much for coming. I know it's, a, it's the busiest time for politicians, and it is the busiest time for the Chief Minister.
thank you very much that you have taken this time out for NDTV, for our viewers. Uh, we sit here at a very critical time. I'll speak to you about that later. But Dr. Saab, first of all, I ask you this small state... You have to ask me about NDTV. कि the best performing the smallest state award जो गोवा को मिला इसके लिए मैं NDTV को गोवा की सरकार की तरफ से गोवा के लोगों की तरफ से बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूँ thank you thank you doctor doctor मैं सबसे पहले आपसे ये पूछता हूँ कि गोवा को लगातार आपके term में ये second term में आपका you are second term chief minister of Goa सिलसिले वार as best performing small state का award मिला है and आज ये उसी कड़ी में अगला step है क्या ऐसा किया आपने revive करने के लिए obviously एक बहुत tough time था it was a black swan event जब आपने chair संभाली और covid हुआ और गोवा जैसे state जिसकी सारी economy dependent है tourism के ऊपर मतलब bulk economy का tourism पे dependent है और फिर mining की बात होती है तो दोनों ही पे बड़ा भारी इम्पैक्ट पड़ा था जब आप मुख्यमंत्री बने थे और एक एक दफा तो ऐसा लग रहा था कि कहीं गोवा की इकोनॉमी कहीं पूरी तरह से चरमना ना जाए वहाँ से किस तरह से आपने स्टेट की इकोनॉमी को और स्टेट के बाकी सारे सोशल फैक्टर्स को रिवाइव किया क्या काम किया उसके विषय डॉक्टर साहब जैसे 2019 में मैं चीफ मिनिस्टर की खुर्ची संभाली तब कोविड का कार्यकाल स्टार्ट हुआ तुरंत ही सात आठ महीने के बाद ही और हॉनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने जो आत्मनिर्भर भारत की जो एक सभी को अनाउंस किया उसी के तहत द स्वयंपूर्ण गोवा मिशन हमने स्टार्ट कर दिया तो स्वयंपूर्ण गोवा मिशन के अंतर्गत हर एक को हर एक चीज रिवाइव करना हमने स्टार्ट कर दिया तो फिर वी हैव स्टार्टेड द फाइनेंशियल रिवाइविंग अलसो वी हैव रीस्ट्रक्चर्ड ऑल द लोन वी हैव रीस्ट एंड वी हैव स्टार्टेड द रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग ऑफ द लोन जो एने द बिग जो इंटरेस्ट था which is the, we have brought to the smaller interest loan. We have taken the RIDF loan, Rural Infrastructure Development Loan, through the NABAD, through the CDB. This type of loan, which infrastructure development, otherwise, we are going for the bigger loan, which is the 7 to 8 percent of the loans from the, all the bankers. We have revived and we have come to the 3 to 4 percent, approximately the 2.5 percent loan also. When the chief minister was made, only hardly the I mean, uh, Nabad ki taraf se rural infrastructure loan bahut hi kam liya tha. Toh target to apna 500 crores of loan tak hum le sakte te. That is the revival is the first. So that we got the relief. Then we have got each and every scheme from the government of India. Which is in the infrastructure development and also in the human resource development. We have tapped all the central funds to the state. So that we have given the boost to develop the infrastructure development. Usse hum achchi tura se infrastructure develop kar sake. The third thing, the COVID ke karya kaal mein, the tourism revive karne ke liye sabhi dhar te te. And a tourism start kiya jaya ya nahi kiya jaya. And a COVID ke, humne 100% vaccination ke baad, turanthi desh mein pehla state, jo tourism start kiya, open kiya logo ke liye, wo Goa state tha. Isi liye sabhi log, and a maximum, the tourists have started coming to again the state. And uh, the fourth one, uh, jab uh, mining puri tarah se band ho chuki thi, to the teen tarah se, the e-auctioning of the, the bachava or the dump auctioning, and uh, now the lease auctioning. Ye economy revive karne se, we are getting the good sufficient funds, the revenue collection start hua. So also I have revised the various and um, um, jo, the non-tax revenue bhi tha, us mein choti si percentage pe revive karne ke baad bhi bada revenue state ke liye aata hai. So that is possible for me to reviving the economic or economic reform se. Or as all, we have given the ease of doing the business in all the way from the tourism sector se leke industrial sectors ko. Sabhi ko jo ease of doing the business se, not only the ranking bada na, but actual field pe ease of doing the business which has also given the boost for the Govan economy. So the mining, tourism and industry, these three sectors or the economic reform which we have, the structure, restructuring of the loan and second one is in, uh, uh, using the various resources, single term uses from the different banks, that has also helped for the um, uh, government to revive the economy. Dr. Saab, I will talk to you about serious things. पहले एक बात कर लेता हूँ कि यहाँ जितने भी लोग बैठे हैं ये यहाँ तो गोवा जाना चाहते हैं या गोवा हो के आ रहे हैं 
तो गोवा की इकोनॉमी जाना चाहते हैं उनको मैं वेलकम करता हूँ और जो जाके आए वो और एक बार होके आ जाए क्योंकि अभी तो बहुत सारा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर चेंजेस अभी द सेकेंड एयरपोर्ट आ गया है विद द जुआरी ब्रिज पहले जुआरी ब्रिज के लिए बहुत ही कंजेशन होता था लोगों को एक एक घंटा रोड ब्लॉकेज होती थी अभी किसी को रोड ब्लॉकेज भी नहीं मिलेगी और द सेकेंड न्यू एयरपोर्ट विच इधर मनोहर इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट विच वेलकम गोवा को सभी वेलकम करते हैं तो मैं ये कह रहा था डॉक्टर साहब कि गोवा एक ऐसी जगह है जहाँ पे हर आदमी टूरिज्म के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से रिलैक्सेशन के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से और अब तो काम के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी ने ऐसा पॉसिबल कर दिया है कि पीपल कैन एक्चुअली वर्क फ्रॉम गोवा एंड बी कनेक्टेड टू एनी वेयर एनी पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इन एनी फार्म और एनी कंपनी सो डॉक्टर साहब ये जो एक वर्क फ्राम गोवा वाला सेगमेंट है उसके लिए एक डिजिटल इकोनॉमी को स्ट्रेंदन करने की ज़रूरत है टूरिज्म के अलावा और आप आपकी सरकार ने जैसा कि मैं देख रहा हूँ उस पर डिजिटल इकोनॉमी पे काफ़ी काम किया है स्मार्ट सिटी मिशन के अंदर में पैंजिम को वो डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी और भी बूस्ट करने की बात थी उसमें क्या प्रोग्रेस है डॉक्टर सावंत अभी तक और कितना काम हो गया है और कितना काम अभी होना बाकी है ताकि ये सब लोग जो हैं अभी तक जो गोवा टूरिज़्म के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से जा रहे हैं ये थोड़ा काम करने के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से भी जा सकें एक्चुअल गोवा का हर विलेज पंचायत हर गांव तो कनेक्टेड uh, है डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी से आज भी हर कोस्टल uh, बीच और ये सब कुछ कनेक्टेड है रही बात स्मार्ट सिटी की तो डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी हर घर फाइबर जो पेंजिम सिटी में हम कंप्लीट करने जा रहे हैं इवन दो डिजिटल नोमेड जो कंसेप्ट द वर्क फ्रॉम बीच वो कंसेप्ट हम स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं विच इज या वर्क फ्रॉम द बीच सो so, लोगों को काम यानी पहला कंसेप्ट तो गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से हम स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं सो नेक्स्ट सो डेट वी कैन इन्वेस्ट वी कैन आस्क फॉर द पब्लिक प्राइवेट पार्टनरशिप टू इन्वेस्ट इन द सेम थिंग इसीलिए द गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से डिजिटल नोमेड एक कंसेप्ट जो है हम शुरू करने जा रहे हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि इसके बाद में नॉट वर्क फ्रॉम होम की जो बात चल रही थी तो आगे हो के लोग इन्जॉय भी करें और काम भी करें इसी के कंसेप्ट के थ्रू गोवा में लोग आए और एंजॉय भी करें और काम भी करें इस कंसेप्ट से हम आगे जा रहे हैं डॉक्टर साहब ये जो वर्क फ्रॉम बीच है ये जरा इसके बारे में बताइए ये बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट है और ये मुझे लगता है कि रीडिफाइनिंग वर्क वाला कॉन्सेप्ट है ये वर्क फ्रॉम बीच जैसे कि अभी जो वर्क फ्रॉम होम जो काम कर रहे थे तो उसको डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी उसके घर में अवेलेबल कर देते थे हम सोच रहे हैं ऑलरेडी वी हैव टेकन द पॉलिसी डिसीजन अल्सो एटलीस्ट फॉर द टू टू थ्री कंसेप्ट यानी ब्लॉक्स रेडी करें क्योंकि उनको कनेक्टिविटी जो वहीं पे अवेलेबल दी जाए सो दैट दे कैन स्टार्ट वर्किंग फ्रॉम द बीच तो दैट टाइप ऑफ कंसेप्ट ऑलरेडी द गवर्नमेंट हैड टेकन द डिसीजन डॉक्टर साहब एक ये तो वर्क फ्रॉम बीच वाली बात हुई एक और चैलेंज जो आपकी गवर्नमेंट के लिए अब आने वाले टाइम में आएगा क्योंकि आप लोगों ने टूरिज़्म को इतना प्रमोट किया है और गवर्नमेंट के बाकी इंडस्ट्रियल सेक्टर्स में भी इतना काम हो रहा है वो ये है कि इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट पे बहुत काम आपकी सरकार ने किया और मेरे विचार में जितना काम आपके टेन्योर में हुआ है उतना टेन्योर इससे पहले कभी एक सिंगल टेन्योर में तो नहीं हुआ गोवा में आ, लंबे समय में हुआ अंतराल में हुआ हो तो मुझे मालूम नहीं है लेकिन अब बढ़ते हुए टूरिज्म की वजह से शायद और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट की ज़रूरत है गोवा में जी हाँ वैसे तो इस डबल इंजन के सरकार के कार्यकाल में वी हैव स्पेंडेड मोर देन थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड करोड्स ऑफ रुपीज ऑन द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन द स्टेट ऑफ गोवा द रोड्स हो ब्रिचिज हो ब्रिजिज हो ब्रिज इवन दो द बीचिस पे जितना सारा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हमें वहाँ पे चाहिए थे इसके चेंजिंग रूम से लेके द पार्किंग्स इव द अगवत जेल म्यूजियम फोर्ट इस तरह के डिफरेंट सुपर स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल ये सब इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हमने नॉर्थ और साउथ दोनों डिस्ट्रिक्ट में कंप्लीट किया और नॉर्थ और साउथ के कनेक्टिविटी ऑल्सो विद इन वन एंड हाफ आवर वी कैन कंप्लीट वन बुद्ध कनेक्टिविटी बट इसके सिवाय भी uh, अभी भी और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की जरूरी है जिस तरह से हम बोलते हैं कि एडवांस टूरिज्म की जब बात आती है तो डेट इज एन एडवेंचर टूरिज्म द स्पिरिचुअल टूरिज्म इसकी भी बात चल रही है तो फिर वेलनेस टूरिज्म इसके लिए जो इंटीरियर हम इनलैंड टूरिज्म की जब बात करते हैं तो हमें टूरिस्ट 
सन सैंड और सी इससे टूरिज्म को इंटीरियर लेके जाने के लिए बाकी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रेडी करने के लिए भी केंद्र सरकार की मदद लगेगी और उससे बाकी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर भी डेवलप हो सकता है हमने कैरावन पॉलिसी होम स्टे पॉलिसी ऑलरेडी लॉन्च की है सो इस पॉलिसी के थ्रू मैंने प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टमेंट तो आएगा लेकिन गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से जो रोड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वाटर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इनलैंड में देना चाहिए इंटरलैंड में देना चाहिए वो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रेडी करने के लिए सो इट इज रिक्वायर्ड सो डेट गवर्नमेंट इज इस तरह की इन्वेस्टमेंट आगे भी यानी करना चाहती है इवन दो द ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट पे हम हमेशा के लिए चाहते हैं कि नॉट ओनली द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ह्यूमन रिसोर्स क्रिएट करना जरूरी रहता है और वो ह्यूमन रिसोर्स क्रिएट करने के लिए हॉस्पिटलिटी इंस्टीट्यूट जो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की तरफ से वहाँ बन रहा है तो उसको और भी ज़्यादा हॉस्पिटलिटी इंस्टीट्यूट और स्किलिंग ऑफ द यूथ जैसे हम बोल रहे हैं कि हॉस्पिटलिटी टाइप ऑफ डिफरेंट कोर्सेज ऑलरेडी वी हैव स्टार्टेड इन अवर आई बट और भी इस तरह के कोर्सेज ह्यूमन रिसोर्स क्रिएट करने के लिए हम स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं और उसके लिए गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की भी मदद चाहिए इवन दो द प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टर्स दो आर रेडी टू इन्वेस्ट इन द स्टेट फॉर देम ऑल्सो वी आर वेलकमिंग टू इन्वेस्ट इन द टूरिज्म सेक्टर हॉस्पिटलिटी सेक्टर यानी कि सन सेंड सी के साथ स्पिरिचुअलिटी और बाकी टूरिज्म गोवा में बढ़े और ज़्यादातर गोवा के ही यूथ जो इस तरह के टूरिज्म एक्टिविटी में पार्टिसिपेट करें पहले यानी हम सिर्फ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलप करके नहीं होगा तो फिर ह्यूमन रिसोर्स के ऊपर ज़्यादा ध्यान देना इसलिए हमारी सरकार इवन दो वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द एविएशन स्किल डेवलपमेंट सेंटर मोपा इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट ही हमने डेवलप किया उसके साथ साथ जो एविएशन स्किल डेवलपमेंट जो स्किल किया उससे अप्रॉक्सीमेटली मोर देन वन यूथ हमने एविएशन सेक्टर में उसको स्किलिंग रीस्किलिंग अप की बात जो थी वो की है अभी द ऑन द सेम लाइन फ्रॉम द आई टी आई टू आई आई टी स्टूडेंट्स वी आर डूइंग द स्किलिंग रीस्किलिंग अपस्किलिंग उसको करना ये ऑलरेडी हमने स्टार्ट किया है और गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की मदद से आगे भी इस तरह से जो ह्यूमन रिसोर्स क्रिएट करने में हम ज़्यादा इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं डॉक्टर साहब इससे दो बातें मैं लूँगा आपसे एक तो स्परिचुअल टूरिज़म की बात लूँगा और एक आपकी अप्रेंटिसिप स्कीम है आपकी गवर्नमेंट की जो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया का भी एक बहुत बड़ा प्रोजेक्ट है अपस्किलिंग को लेकर के यूथ की जिसकी बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरत भी है इस देश में बट इससे पहले मैं ये आपको बता दूं कि शायद स्पिरिचुअल टूरिज्म जो आपका है उसके बहुत ज़्यादा टेकर्स आपको गोवा में मुश्किल होंगे ढूंढने स्पिरिचुअल टूरिज्म के लिए तो हम हमेशा के लिए लोगों को वेलकम करते हैं रिसेंटली हमारे स्वामी ब्रह्मेशानंद स्वामी जी ने यानी वहाँ पे जो महाआरती जो उत्तर काशी में रहती है वो दक्षिण काशी में जैसे ऑन सेम कंसेप्ट जो स्टार्टेड द समुद्र आरती एट अ मिरामार बीच हमने जो मिरामार बीच जो प्रोमिनेंट डेवलप किया है वहाँ पे रिसेंटली उन्होंने समुद्र आरती स्टार्ट की है इसी तरह से आगे हो के मुझे लगता है कि गोवा इन फ्यूचर विल बी नोन फॉर द दक्षिण काशी भी जाने जाते गोवा में ढेर सारे टेम्पल्स वहाँ पे हैं जो टेम्पल्स ऑलरेडी टेम्पल कनेक्ट टेम्पल कनेक्ट और बाकी तरह से ही स्पिरिचुअलिटी और ज़्यादा बढ़ेगी योगा वेलनेस सेंटर भी गोवा में प्राइवेट लोग इन्वेस्ट करने आ रहे हैं तो मुझे लगता है इन फ्यूचर इस तरह की स्पिरिचुअल टूरिज्म को भी बढ़ावा मिलेगा माय फाइनल क्वेश्चन टू यू डॉक्टर सावन ज़्यादा समय नहीं लूँगा मैं आपसे लेकिन एक मेरा फाइनल सवाल ये है कि जो अप्रेंटिसशिप स्कीम आपकी गवर्नमेंट ने लॉन्च करी और एक बड़ा यूनिक एक्सपेरिमेंट आपकी सरकार ने किया वो ये कि वेरियस गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट्स के साथ आपने गोवा के गोवन यंगस्टर्स को अटैच करना शुरू किया उनको एक स्कॉलरशिप टाइप ऑफ अमाउंट दिया उसका क्या सक्सेस है क्या रिजल्ट्स अब उसके आने लगे हैं बिकॉज उस स्कीम को लॉन्च की हुई है जहाँ तक मुझे लगता है एक साल तकरीबन होने वाला है सबसे पहले तो मैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी को धन्यवाद देता हूँ क्योंकि उन्होंने सोचा कि स्किल डेवलपमेंट जैसी नवी मिनिस्ट्री चाहिए और 2014 में माननीय प्रधानमंत्री ने स्किल डेवलपमेंट एक न्यू मिनिस्ट्री फॉर्म की और उसी न्यू मिनिस्ट्री के अंतर्गत उन्होंने अप्रेंटिसिप वाला कंसेप्ट वो इंट्रोड्यूस किया वही प्लेटफॉर्म यूज़ करके हमने गोवा सरकार में उसी प्लेटफॉर्म के तहत एक वर्क कल्चर डेवलप होना चाहिए चाहे वो ग्रेजुएट हो पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट हो या अंडर ग्रेजुएट हो 
उसको एक बार काम करने के नॉट ओनली द आई या इंजीनियरिंग या टेक्निकल सेक्टर के लोगों को अप्रेंटिसिप मिले और बाकी जो ग्रेजुएट अंडर ग्रेजुएट जो रहते हैं उनको अप्रेंटिसिप न मिले तो वर्क कल्चर डेवलप नहीं होगा इस तरह के जो ग्रेजुएट अंडर ग्रेजुएट मिल के यानी वो घर पर बैठे रहेंगे तो फिर मैंने सोचा कि वही प्लेटफॉर्म यूज़ करके एक स्टेट में वर्क कल्चर डेवलप करने के लिए जो कोई यानी पास आउट होता है या अंडर अंडर ग्रेजुएट फेल होकर घर पर रहता है उसके लिए भी अप्रेंटिसिप स्टार्ट करें और मैंने वो स्टार्ट की इन द गवर्नमेंट एंड इन द प्राइवेट सेक्टर मैंने सबको कहा कि आप भी अप्रेंटिसिप इसी तरह से ले लो तो फिर सभी ने एन अप्रेंटिसिप अप्रॉक्सीमेटली मोर देन 15,000 थाउजेंड यूथ इन ईयर दे हैव ज्वाइन फॉर द अप्रेंटिसिप उससे अभी वर्क कल्चर बहुत ही अच्छा बढ़ा लोगों को लगा कि इससे जो स्किलिंग रीस्किलिंग अपस्किलिंग वाला कंसेप्ट भी जो मैं आ, सीखा था उसको एक्चुअल इम्प्लीमेंट करें और जब एक्चुअल इम्प्लीमेंट करता है तो उसके काम के लिए वो अच्छा काम में आ जाएगा ये कंसेप्ट डेवलप हो गया है और आ, मुझे लगता है कि इसी तहत कि सभी प्राइवेट सेक्टर में भी लोगों ने बच्चों को ज्वाइन करके ले लिया और मैं ऐड करूँगा इसके ऊपर कि जो आ, मैंने जो क्लास सी कैटेगरी के जो जॉब गवर्नमेंट में रहते हैं फॉर देम इट इज़ अ कंपलसरी द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इन द गोवा स्टेट गवर्नमेंट में आइर वो अप्रेंटिसिप हो या एक्सपीरियंस हो इट इज़ अ कंपलसरी टू ज्वाइन इन द गवर्नमेंट इससे पहले वो नहीं था कोई भी ग्रेजुएट पास होता था कोई भी जाके एप्लीकेशन करता था उसको जॉब मिलती थी लेकिन जो एक्सपीरियंस वाले वही रह जाते थे इसके लिए कम से कम एक साल का एक्सपीरियंस नहीं तो अप्रेंटिसिप कंपल्सरी है इसलिए अभी हर बच्चा यानी वो अप्रेंटिसिप के लिए ज्वाइन होता है वो ग्रेजुएट होने के बाद घर नहीं बैठता है सो इट इज़ गेटिंग द एडिशनल बेनिफिट नो डाउट ही इज़ गेटिंग द ऑनरियम बट इज़ गेटिंग द एक्सपीरियंस वर्क एक्सपीरियंस इन द पर्टिकुलर फील्ड तो फिर पूरे स्टेट में एक अच्छा वर्क कल्चर वाला माहौल क्रिएट हुआ है और बच्चों में एक उत्साह है सो डैट ऑटोमेटिकली वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द स्टाफ सिलेक्शन कमीशन डेट इज द गोवा पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन इज ऑलरेडी देर एक ट्रांसफरेंट मैनर से ये प्रोसेस स्टार्ट हो गया है डॉक्टर साहब पॉलिटिशियन हो और पॉलिटिक्स की बात ना हो तो थोड़ा काम कमज़ोर हो जाता है तो आपसे पूछ लेता हूं कि वो जो मोदी जी का स्लोगन है इस बार का कि अब की बार 400 पार उसमें आपका कितना योगदान है 100 परसेंट योगदान है तो, क्योंकि जो अब की बार 400 पार एन तो 400 पार करेंगी ओन बीजेपी 370 पार करेंगी गोवा की तरफ से हंड्रेड दोनों के दोनों सीट यानी भारतीय जनता पार्टी मोदी जी के परिवार के चुन के आएंगे तो और बाकी भी जहाँ जहाँ पे मेरे जैसे छोटे कार्यकर्ता के मदद लगे कि वहाँ वहाँ पे मैं तो प्रेजेंट रहूँगा बिल्कुल आप तो आज अभी बड़े स्टेट्स में कैंपेनिंग के लिए भी गए हैं पहले कर्नाटक गए थे और बड़े स्टेट्स में भी कैंपेनिंग के लिए गए हैं क्या माहौल दिखता है डॉक्टर साहब एक फाइनल क्वेश्चन लेता हूँ बड़े स्टेट और बीजेपी जैसे स्टेट जैसे मैंने महाराष्ट्र हो या कर्नाटक हो इसमें तो माहौल बहुत ही अच्छा है लेकिन आई एम सरप्राइज मैन आई विजिटेड टू द सदर्न पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री केरल हो तेलंगाना हो तमिलनाडु हो इन स्टेटों में भी मैंने प्रवास किया है वहाँ पे जिस तरह से माननीय मोदी जी को जो अट्रैक्शन मिल रहा है जो लोगों का लोग चाह रहे हैं मैंने दो तीन इंच मैंने 370 और रामलला दर्शन के बाद तो मुझे लगता है कि पीपल विल गेट द सरप्राइज इन द केरल तेलंगाना तमिलनाडु इस जैसे स्टेट में बहुत बड़ा सरप्राइज लोगों को दिखेगा और इन जैसे स्टेट यानी केरल और तेलंगाना में तमिलनाडु में भी अकाउंट ओपन भारतीय जनता पार्टी का हो जाएगा लोगों को पता चलेगा इन स्टेटों में भी माननीय मोदी जी का प्रभाव जो है बहुत बड़ी मात्रा से प्रभाव है और पहली बार इन स्टेटों में भी बहुत ने बीजेपी के सीट्स और एनडीए के सीट्स जीतेंगे तो आपके 100 परसेंट वाले जवाब पे वंस अगेन डॉक्टर सावन थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग एट एट सच ए शॉर्ट नोटिस थैंक यू फॉर फॉर कमिंग फ्रॉम गोवा एंड थैंक यू वंस अगेन फ्रॉम ऑल द व्यूअर्स ऑफ एन थैंक यू फॉर द आपका जो एन का अवार्ड हमें मिला इसलिए आपका भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और आपने मुझे मौका दिया कि लोगों के सामने गोवा की बात रखने की तो मैं यही अवसर लेके गोवा जैसे छोटे राज्य में सबको इनवाइट करता हूँ टूरिज़्म के लिए तो सन सेंट सी के साथ यानी स्पिरिचुअलिटी और जो हर घर फाइबर वाली जो बात चल रही है उसी के साथ यानी वर्क फ्रॉम बीच इसके लिए भी आ जाए इसके लिए मैं सबको इनवाइट करता हूँ फिर एक बार एन का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अरे वो ट्रॉफी कहाँ गई थैंक यू गोवा चीफ मिनिस्टर प्रमोद सावंत जी आपने 
हमारे मंच पर आने के लिए इतना वक्त निकाला थैंक यू सो मच एंड थैंक यू निकुंज शिफ्टिंग फोकस नाउ लेट्स नाउ इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू अनदर वेरी अकम्पलिश्ड वुमेन हु ज्वाइंस अस हियर टुडे द स्पॉटलाइट विल बी ऑन हर शॉर्टली शी ड्रेम्ड ऑफ फ्लाइंग फ्रॉम द टाइम शी वॉज अ चाइल्ड बट अ जर्नी टू फुलफिल दिस ड्रीम रिक्वायर्ड बोथ अ फिजिकल एंड अ मेंटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन शी लॉस्ट 20 kgs to meet the medical requirements and with the support and encouragement of her father became an Indian Air Force pilot in May 2023 squadron leader Nikita Malhotra flew a sortie with a critical emergency she flew over 2 hours with the emergency situation eventually successfully recovering the aircraft with all passengers safe and with least damage to the aircraft for her act of courage squadron leader nikita malhotra was awarded the vayu sena medal for gallantry she was also part of the fly past during this year's republic day let's have a round of applause for squadron leader nikita malhotra we have honorable minister hardeep puri with us the world's most populous country that we are and also the fifth largest economy india has taken several policy measures to address its energy trilemma of um, ensuring energy affordability and environmental sustainability for an ambitious country that we are constantly on the move the modi government has set a road map that india will contribute to 25% of the global demand by 2040 and achieve 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2025 and we will be self reliant by in fact mr puri believes that before 2047 how is india looking at converting the current global oil challenges from the ukraine crisis into an opportunity to secure affordable energy union minister for petroleum and natural gas housing and urban development is with us and uh, over the last few years uh, he has on multiple platforms spoken rather unabashedly and forthrightly putting across india's uh, road map i would like to invite the honorable minister on the stage and my colleague tamanna inamdar executive editor of ndtv profit for a conversation here Hello hello everyone welcome minister sir thank you so much for speaking with us here at NG TV i think uh, the one of the ministries you house perhaps has always been the toughest one from the indian perspective because the narrative has already and always been that india imports most of its energy resources we're dependent on what happens in the world and the average indian then suffers at the pump in the last few years that challenge has increased multifold with what's happening in the world what has been the biggest strategy in your mind when trying to manage what's happening mm -hmm. in ukraine russia uh -huh. now in the red sea to ensure that india is never energy starved what you describe <clears throat> as a challenge i think also contains within it an opportunity and i think that challenge and in turn that opportunity becomes very exciting if the economy is firing on all six cylinders i am stopping at six cylinders i think we can go on to further also the energy is the lifeline of any economy you can make a reasonably sound assessment of how a country is faring if you just look at its energy consumption and i'm not saying anything which is uh, in the realm of rocket science but if you look at the two huge economies in the world today one 23 24 trillion us dollars and the other 19 trillion dollars you'll find that in that economy the second one energy consumption has either plateaued or energy imports 
and utilization are falling, which means there are fault lines in that economy. It's a simple assessment, Abhi. Now, if you look at the Indian situation, I think uh, Maria, when she was here, she um, uh, introducing us, she made two points which I just want to quickly build on. One is she talked about the energy trilemma. By the trilemma, I mean availability, affordability, and sustainability. And I think on all three fronts, we've done well. There was not a single occasion in the last several years, I've been associated with this ministry only for two and a half years. But even if you look before that, there was never an occasion where petrol at the retail disbursing point was short or there was a shortage of diesel or cooking gas or anything. So we managed well. But I think the real issue is how do you contain your inflation and how do you manage fuel prices? And that is where I think the Modi government deserves not just a pat on its back, but real admiration. Let me try and explain this. At a point when 800 million people or 80 crore people were being and are still being provided three meals of dry ration in a day, the Honorable Prime Minister was able to bring the price of fuel down. Look at the international uh, levels. We are the only country in the world where over a two-year reference period, the price of petrol and diesel has actually come down. The only country in the world. Why? Two things. I think um, to start with, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister decided on two occasions, November 21, 2021 and May 2022, that we were going to reduce the central excise duty. And that brought the price of petrol down by 13 rupees and that of diesel down by 16 rupees. And the BJP rule states reduced their VAT. So you had a differential of 12 rupees, 15 rupees between a BJP rule state and uh, the non-BJP rule states. So this is the centers doing. But on top of that, you have good corporate entities or good corporate citizens like the OMCs when the prices were going haywire. Around India, uh, Sri Lanka, the prices I think had gone up by 60, 70 percent. Pakistan even higher. Pakistan, in fact, had to shut off electricity at 8 p.m. because they were genuinely short. Uh, in the United States, Western Europe, Canada, I think it went up again between 25 and 40 percent. And India, the prices are coming down because the OMCs. The oil marketing companies decided, as good corporate citizens, that it doesn't matter that situation is challenging, they will hold back their profits. Something in the oil jargon called under-recoveries. And at a time of under-recoveries, they held back. And look what happened after that, when the situation eased. Because during the turbulence, the price of oil during the economic lockdown came down to as little as $19.56 a barrel, which is virtually free by, by current yardsticks, and then went up to $130. Now, this combination, that you were able to run a system which is based on very positive, decisive governmental action at the central government level, cooperation from the state governments, and the OMCs deciding to play ball. That is what resulted in our being able to bring the prices down for two years. And then when the market lifted up, I mean, OMCs are uh, laughing their way to the bank now. <laughs> so, so you spoke about the trilemma. There is also a dilemma here. Mm -hmm. The dilemma is that when OMCs laugh all the way to the bank, a section of people say it's at the expense of the average Indian at the petrol pump. That when international they can't say that. They can't say that because the price at the petrol pump has actually come down. But when the crude prices were low, the price at the petrol pump didn't come no, down. No, I, 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 think, I think that is selective blabber which comes from an opposition party uh, which uh, was in power in states uh, where they did not bring the price down. You see, the OMCs at the end of the day are not philanthropic organizations. They're not in the charity business. An OMC, like a private sector company, has to answer its shareholders. It has to go to its board for approvals. So I think they did what they could. They brought the, you know, they held back at a time of under recoveries. They still didn't raise the prices. Now when they've raised the prices, you're benefiting. But they've done something more just now. They brought the price down by two rupees uh, uh, and uh, also... 
yeah, two rupees further. Yeah. So today you have a situation that on account of those excise cuts and then account of our other decisions, diversifying supplies and further cuts now, you have a happy situation that um, petrol and diesel prices are more um, affordable than ever before. Do you think there's room for more, for more cuts right now? We are under something called a code of conduct. <laughs> I'd be, I, I have a view on everything in life. I have a view on everything in life. I mean, uh, left to myself, why not? But just now we are a code of conduct. I mean, any statement I make uh, okay. is not liable to be, is bound to be uh, picked on and acted on. <laughs> Talking about OMCs, when, and you talked about them laughing all the way to the bank, when we cover what's happening with OMCs on the stock market, it's one of the biggest turnaround stories. They're some of the most valued companies. The perception of public-run companies in general, and I would say OMCs in particular, has undergone a sea change. And this is global brokerages seeing this as well. What do you think is that big change? No, the change is staring you in the face. Suddenly, the public sector, I'm talking about perception now. I can come to individual companies. I'd be happy to share one or two examples. Public perception used to be that public sector companies are like the bureaucratic um, setup of the rest of the government. People come to office at 9 o'clock, run away at 5 o'clock. They are risk averse. They don't uh, go out and grab the challenges which are available. And by and large, um, and there are some other allegations that... Uh, the oil public sector companies or the OMCs are also excessively amenable to some of the big private sector giants that they are able to control them. I think the good news is that public sector in general is doing very well. Uh, I also happen to be Minister for Housing and Urban Affairs. Hutko has done very well. Hutko has got what a Maharatna status now. Uh, the OMCs uh, somebody said, you know, but the market is rising. Uh, yeah, market is rising, but the market rose 43% and the uh, OMC valuations rose in multiples thereof, some 120%, 160%. Why? Because they've done a good job. And in a, in a time of crisis, in a time where there was challenge, they, they proved their mettle and uh, the marketplace, I don't use words like the magic of the market, but the market has a lot of very intelligent people who can make assessments on what is happening and that's how valuations go up. Right now, looking at where crude prices are going, we are seeing Brent inching back to 87. You have drone attacks taking out Russian uh, refineries. Is this something that we should be worried about in terms of Indian exposure to international crude prices? Look, at any point of time in the last three, four, five years, Anyone who thinks that the global ch situation is not challenging either lives in cuckoo land or underestimates what the challenges are. The challenges have been there for a long time. The pandemic was a challenge. Recovery from the pandemic was a challenge. Then the Ukraine military conflict, we are talking about February 2022. No one is saying that there is not enough oil in the market. What is happening is that those who control the production and release of energy, that is crude oil, they've decided to cut back. Madam, the total production and release into the market prior to this phase was 102 million barrels per day. Suddenly OPEC plus, those who are the producers of this energy, they cut it by 5, 5 million barrels a day. So what happened as a result of that, you've, got, you've down from 102 to 97. Ideally, if you reduce 5 million barrels a day in a situation like this, price should have shot up. But the fact that one big economy is not growing as fast, look, one has to be very careful with words. If you're a $19 trillion economy and you're growing at 2%, you still, that's a lot of growth. But do we look at Western Europe uh, at the same time? Um, I don't want to go into individual countries, but if you look at quarter on quarter, they are, they are technically in a recession situation. So energy becomes a very important aspect of the economic equation. I am not worried about $87 or $85. What I would like to see, and I would like to reassure myself, 
that we do not find ourselves in a situation where either of these challenges exacerbates and becomes a major conflict. I mean the Red Sea, I can give you many others. My sense of reassurance comes from the fact that I believe that all the players involved in this situation today actually don't want a major configuration. That's my view. If that view is correct, we'll be able to manage. But I'm saying something more. Even if that view is not correct and the challenges will come, India will manage better than the others. Because you've got a system now of both the domestic players and the political leadership, including now, I think, increasingly in the states, where people realize that you have to solve a problem. Recently, we had an issue in Rajasthan, uh, where, you know, um, because the BJP, before the BJP government came there, the Congress government had not, was not willing to reduce the VAT. The difference between Rajasthan and the neighboring states, 12 rupees difference per petrol per liter. So that is one. The second is, I think we've got confidence in ourselves. When I became Minister for Petroleum and uh, Natural Gas in July 2021, there was one major OMC which was up for sale. Now you're smiling. See, I, I may basically mention, and you know what is. So one of the first things that I realized when I became um, petroleum, uh, joined the petroleum ministry, everyone I met said, Aapko BPCL bechni hai, to hume bechi hai. So my first question to myself was, why is everybody wanting to buy an entity if the entity we are selling, there must be something right in it. And you know, on the one hand, it pains me to acknowledge this, but at the same time, I'm thrilled. We decided at our level, no sale, which is in marked contrast to the position I took on Air India. On Air India, I got up in parliament and said, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the issue is not privatization or no private privatization. Here the choice is, if you don't privatize, you'll have to close the airline down. And then that was a very good decision. Here, we said we're not selling it. You know, the first three quarters of the year, the profits after tax of BPCL are almost equivalent to what price people wanted to buy it at. So that shows the strength of our company. And I mean, I, I, I was um, appalled. How can BPCL, which has such rich uh, tradition and which has so much of involvement in our um, economy in every part of the oil equation and chain. So I'm very happy. So all these companies are doing well. Um, what, what, would it be fair to say that that's an extension to the view on disinvestment overall? Why sell? No, I don't think you can draw an inference from that. After all, the Air India disinvestment proved to be very su successful and very right. Here was an entity which should never have been considered for disinvestment. But we'll leave, put that aside. We'll put that aside. We have to make it work. And I think today um, that reversal of the decision is now fully justified in terms of the economic numbers we are looking at. I just want to come, uh, you know, and, and speak to you a bit about the whole strategy India had of buying Russian oil when Russia was facing sanctions. There was pressure, uh, there was flack for some, from some quarters globally. We stood firm and said we will do what works for us best. As of today, do you think we still need to import that quantum from Russia? Is there a concern now there are sanctions on Russian tankers or Russian, uh, you know, transport ships? What is the situation right now, sir? No, first of all, I think there's a lot of um, uh, subterfuge out there. A lot of things which are said make no sense to me. One is the Indian position. The Indian position all along has been, we will buy from wherever we have to buy. And our position is that our OMCs, I'm not speaking on behalf of my private sector, and I think the ratio between the OMCs and private sector is about 70, 30 or so, thereabouts. So 70% of our imports are done by the oil marketing company. Their position clearly is, we will buy from wherever we have to buy. We will float a tender, it will be a transparent tender, and you will respond to that tender by quoting a price delivery at the point of at our ports. Brilliant. Which means that and we'll buy from anyone. Was there ever any sanction on Russian oil? Not at all. I'm not aware of any sanction. There was some loose talk. Are aap se kyo rahe? You are um, funding Putin's uh, military machine. Are bhai, 
मैंने विदेश मंत्री जी को कहा जब वो वॉशिंगटन जा रहे थे उस समय मैंने कहा आपसे ये सवाल पूछा जाएगा तो उनको एक चीज कहना वी बाय और यू बाय मोर इन वन आफ्टरनून देन आई बाय इन अ क्वार्टर अच्छा अगर आपको वॉर मशीन के उसकी मिलिट्री मशीन को फाइनेंस करने की आपको इतनी चिंता है वाई यू बाइंग इन रिच यूरेनियम फ्रॉम दैट सो लेट्स नॉट गेट इन टू दैट देर आर नो रश नो सैंक्शन वट हैपन इज वी बॉट लेस देन जीरो टू जीरो पॉइंट टू परसेंट ऑफ आर रिक्वायरमेंट फ्रॉम रशिया प्रायर टू मिलिट्री कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन रशिया एंड यूक्रेन दैट सडनली रोज एंड टूडे इट्स अब्सटैंटिव सब्सटैंशियल थर्टी थर्टी टू परसेंट ऑफ सो विल इट रिमेन लाइक दैट well i have a very simple response if we get a good price it will remain like that but in between many others started offering us good rates the iraqi is the you know there one country charges something called a asian premium when they discovered that the indians are the guys who buy in india are very smart they will buy from wherever you get the cheapest amount so they stop buying from that source so they keep shifting on an average we consume 5 million barrels a day earlier it was roughly divided between Four or five of these countries at the rate of 800,000 barrels to a million barrels a day: Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, Kuwait, Iraq, and another 800,000 with all of them put together. Now Russia has entered the equation. I am not in the um, astrology or soothsayer business, but I read things uh, in the newspapers. Headline: India's imports from Russia drastically drop. अरे भाई 0.2 पॉइंट टू परसेंट था अगर थर्टी टू परसेंट से थर्टी परसेंट आया वेर इज अ ड्रास्टिक ड्रॉप सो आई थिंक द न्यूज पेपर हेडलाइन ऑल्सो डोंट नो देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड अ प्राइस कैप दे वुड लाइक यू टू बाय रशियन ऑल चीप आई मीन यू आस्क मी अ क्वेश्चन यू हैव नास्ट इट कैन आस्क द क्वेश्चन ऑन योर बिहार I'm, if there I'm, is a, if there I'm is a politely price... waiting for you to finish to ask my question. No, no. So I'm going to ask a question about are you unhappy with the price cap or are you um, happy or unhappy? अरे भाई मेरे को कोई सस्ता और तेल दे रहा वाई शुड बी अनहैपी अगर वो कह रहा है इससे ज्यादा नहीं खरीदो और मेरे को सस्ता तेल मिलता आई शुड बाय इट बट देर इज अनदर कैच एंड दिस इज द मोर इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल दिस बिजनेस अबाउट द वेस्ट बींग वेरी अपसेट विद इंडिया द इन साइड स्टोरी इज डिफरेंट मैडम द इन साइड स्टोरी इज द वेस्ट सेट थैंक गॉड फॉर इंडिया यू आर बाइंग रशियन ऑयल अदरवाइज जस्ट इमेजिन वो कितने तेरह मिलियन बैरल्स दे प्रोड्यूस इन अ डे इफ दैट थर्टीन मिलियन बैरल्स गोज ऑफ दी एयर गोज ऑफ द मार्केट देन द demand then the pressure on the other oil goes up so the west is not unhappy with india buying russian oil but this is a game which is partly geopolitical where we tell each other ki acha iska ye karo wo karo by the way our uh, import of energy from russia uh, from us now is 20 billion dollars a year so but you know the the big challenge for india is to over time reduce that dependency on oil and i would like your comment on that what is our transition fuel are we moving to gas the lng deal with qatar was a big one in this direction see if uh, in the next uh, two decades if 25% of the increase in global demand is going to come from india so you're looking at a situation where your overall base and in consumption is shooting up so whatever increases you are making in your domestic production a very small part of that but i can tell you with confidence the we've taken two very major decisions out of our 3.5 million square kilometers of sedimentary basin we've opened up 1 million square kilometers for exploration we've opened up on the data aspect completely now data is freely available earlier we used to have a situation we used to tell people to come and prospect and then we found oil which say ye to hamara sovereign asset hai we've changed all that today i am more confident than ever before that domestic exploration and production thanks also to the cooperation of the major oil companies in the world i'm talking about b uh, bp shell chevron exxon exxon mobil and one of them is devoting 25% of its supercomputing time to analyzing indian data so that's changing and that's why people are very confident on the transition fuel look we are taking our gas in the energy mix from 6% to 15% 96 billion dollars investment it's happening pipeline is increasing we are finding gas we are importing more gas we've just signed a very major deal with one supplier we've done that then 
we are moving from there as a transit fuel. Ultimately, the fuel of the future is green hydrogen. And there, it's a good story. It's a great story and so much more to talk about. But thank you so much for your time, Mr. Puri. Truly, India's energy transition is something the world will watch. Thank, thank you, you very much. And uh, uh, thank you for being supporters of green energy. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being such a lovely crowd. You have been uh, very patient, you have been very kind, and uh, I want you all to uh, give a round of applause for yourself. Can you please do that? Hindustan mein jab sports ki baat hoti hai, to sabse pehle hum cricket ki baat karte hain. Aur cricket ki baat karte hain, to hamare saath यहाँ पे चार सुपरस्टार्स हैं जिनसे जिनसे हम जाके थोड़ी सी बात करते हैं और जानते हैं कि आ, क्या चल रहा है आजकल क्रिकेट में लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन वी हैव विदास फोर सुपरस्टार्स ऑफ द इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम वी हैव शफाली वर्मा वी हैव श्रियांका पाटिल वी हैव स्नेह राणा एंड वी हैव राधा यादव लेडीज सबसे पहले तो डब्ल्यू uh, के बारे में बात करते हैं बहुत ही शानदार सीजन रहा है स्पेशली uh, इनके लिए नॉट सो मच फॉर यू तो थोड़ी सी लड़ाई भी करवाते हैं यहाँ पे यू आर यूनाइटेड बंच इज वॉट यू आर सेंग राइट और बट टेल एस अबाउट यूर एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ प्लेइंग इन द डब्ल्यू पी एल इट हैज बीन अ फिनोमिनल सीजन दिस इज द सेकेंड सीजन वॉट अ ग्रेट टूर्नामेंट या ऑफ कोर्स हम फाइनल तक पहुंचे सो रियली ग्रेट टूर्नामेंट फॉर अस एंड ऑफ कोर्स हमारे इंडियन प्लेयर्स के अगेंस्ट खेलना तो बहुत ही मजा आता है सो या डब्ल्यू पी एल के लिए हम हमेशा वेट करते हैं बिकॉज बहुत 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 मजा आता है एंड ऑफ कोर्स बहुत बड़ी लीग हो गई है बहुत ज़्यादा क्राउड आता है सो थैंक्स टू थैंक्स टू बी सही फॉर दिस एंड सो या जस्ट इंजॉय इंजॉइंग डब्ल्यू पी एल एंड आई होप आई होप वुमेन्स स्पोर्ट और ग्रो हो सो या ग्रोथ की बात अगर कर रहे हैं हम ग्रोथ की अगर बात कर रहे हैं तो इनसे ज़्यादा प्रियंका से ज़्यादा जो है वो इस बात को कोई ज़्यादा अच्छे से समझा सकती हैं क्योंकि सेकेंड सीजन में ही इन्होंने डब्ल्यू पी एल ट्रॉफी जीत ली और आपके आपके फेवरेट विराट कोहली काफ़ी टाइम से डब्ल्यू पी एल की ट्रॉफी जीतना चाह रहे हैं आप आप क्या उनको मैसेज देना चाहेंगे ओ माई गॉड आई मीन वी वर ऑल वेटिंग फॉर दिस कप फॉर पास्ट सिक्सटीन ईयर्स एंड वी फाइनली डिड इट बट आई थिंक द मेन्स टीम आर डूइंग रियली ग्रेट द वर्किंग रियली हार्ड फॉर दैट ट्रॉफी एंड वी कैन ऑल सी दैट दैट दे रियली वर्किंग हार्ड एंड रियली वॉन्टिंग टू डू वेल एंड गेट दैट ट्रॉफी होम बट आई थिंक दे रियली डू इट वेरी सून एंड गुड लक फॉर दैम एंड थैंक यू सो मच Wonderful, absolutely lovely. Uh, let's also because uh, because this is the Indian cricket team that we are talking about. Let's try and get a sense of uh, who's the naughtiest in this team. Who creates the who creates the most trouble in this team? I think uh, Jemmy and Shrey. <laughs> All right, uh, what a lovely conversation with these ladies. A huge round of applause for the Indian women's cricket team. Back to you, Gagi. Thanks so much for that, Osama, and a lovely chat with the women cricketers. And remember, we are spotlighting women achievers during this Indian of the Year. Now it's time for us to put the spotlight on woman three. And how do we best describe our next high-achieving woman, para athlete, national awardee, motivational speaker, social worker, disability rights advocate, accessibility advocate as well? That doesn't even begin to describe Suvarna Raj's journey. Stricken by polio at the age of two, she battled many odds to become a well-known para athlete in powerlifting, table tennis, and then athletics. She has participated in three para Asian games and won medals nationally as well as internationally. 
She was recently appointed an election commission of India ambassador to encourage those with disabilities to participate in the elections, something she's been doing for years. Subarna Raj is a National Role Model awardee and a National Youth Award winner. And as an access auditor and director at Sugamya, she works every day to create a more accessible environment for those with disabilities. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Subarna Raj. And we are back with another category. And this one is a very special one. From Oscar wins to recording bre breaking uh, box office profits, 2023 was the year of highs for Indian cinema. 2023 also showed that uh, it's a beginning of a new phase in the Indian cinema, one which was marked by deeply involved collaboration of various industries which are about major cross-industry collaboration. Have I revealed anything, Sumit? No. So, Maria ki baato se, aap log samajhi gai honge ki ab hum kya baat karne ja rahe hain. Hum baat karne wale hain film, filmo ki. Film unit ki ek aisi shaksiyat hoti hai filmo mein, jo kisi ko bhi apne ishaaro par nacha deta hai. Wo chahe, to ek sukhe huwe peed ko bhoat hi khubsurti se dikhaye aur lage ki isse achhi art koi hoi nahi sakti. To film ka jo director hota hai, uska ye kaam hota hai. आप समझ गए होंगे कि मैं किस कैटेगरी की अब बात कर रहा हूं हम बात करने जा रहे हैं बगैर हिचकिचाते हुए अगली कैटेगरी के बारे में और जो कि है एनडीटीवी डायरेक्टर ऑफ द ईयर एंड टू गिव अवे द अवार्ड मे आई प्लीज कॉल ऑन द स्टेज ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन डेवलपमेंट हरदीप सिंह पुरी एंड कुरियन चंदा पिलाई चीफ सेल्स ऑफिसर फॉर नॉर्थ रीजन अडानी सिमेंट प्लेस ऑन दिस स्टेज Sir, sir, sir. Puri sir, you have a request in the name of the envelope. Sir, please come in the center. Yeah. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, sir, sir. And the director of the year award goes to Atli. Woo! Please come over Atli. कितने करोड़ कमाए हैं कोई नहीं जानता है 100, 200, 300 सौ इस साल की सबसे बड़ी फिल्म 2023 की जवान के डायरेक्टर हैं शाहरुख खान से नचाया है और देखने में जितने युवा हैं काम उतने ही बड़े बड़े कर रहे हैं सर जोरदार तालियां दोस्तों एटली को रोज रोज दिल्ली में देखने को नहीं मिलते हैं <laughs> And Mr. Puri, if I may ask you, when did you see the movie? The, the mic, please. The mic will come to you and then we'll have the conversation. When did you see yeah, the yeah. movie? First to you and uh, then I'll ask Atli as well that you had spoken to Shah Rukh Khan and you wanted to make a romantic film, one of those, you know, Shah Rukh Khan ka typical jo pose hota hai. What changed? Why did you have a collaboration for Jawan instead? Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you to everyone. And to answer your question, uh, I felt uh, for a very long time, for a 30 years, uh, Shah Rukh has saved mass zone. So I think I should trigger that and present it to the audience. So he can become a voice and uh, uh, he is the icon of Indian cinema to the global audience. So I thought I should carry social message through him. That's the reason I went with Shah Rukh sir on a mass zone. And I, Mr. Puri, if I may ask you that same question, I mean in the sense that you are a cinema buff, you and your wife, Lakshmi <laughs> ma'am, regularly watch cinema, when did you see Jawan in particular? <laughs> well, I saw Jawan, but I've also, I just uh, mentioned to our hero here, I mean uh, directors are also heroes, I mean I just told him that, I mean I thought it was great privilege and honor for me to be handing this out, uh, this award, because otherwise what do you do? You put me in the, in the category of builders, oil companies and all that. I mean, look at this kind of creative, creative uh, genius here. So I was so delighted. And you know, I'm, um, I was in the world of diplomacy for 39 years. Um, so I quickly told him, you know, my son-in-law is also a Tamil. <laughs> no, I watched it, but I, as I said, sometimes 
you watch a film, you watch the, I mean, the, the star cast is one thing, but I think the director, uh, as we all know, a director is to a film which is very difficult to uh, drive. So, more strength to your elbow. And uh, may you go from, is it correct to say blockbuster to block, blockbuster? Is that correct expression? Huh? And laugh your way to the bank. Okay. All the best. All the best. Actually, uh, like. I have a couple of questions for you. First, yeah. huh. how many crores, 200, 400, <laughs> 600, how many crores it was? Exactly. I think 1,160 woo, on Tate. Acha, uh, next question is. Can I ask you a question? Electoral <laughs> bonds liye ke nahi? Sorry, that was that, that was the spur of the moment. But uh, that's actually, politically incorrect, sir. Actually, kaha rakhe hain? Where have you kept it? 1,060 crores. Sorry, sir. I didn't get. I didn't get. <laughs> kaha don't pe rakhe? Don't answer it. But he's saying, where have you kept that 1,000 crores? Sir, I am a director. It goes to Shahrukh sir. Red chilli. You have to check with him. <laughs> Okay, one moment now, because uh, if you have Atlee here, how can you not have the music? Ladies and gentlemen, let's have that music. You can do it. <laughs> please, ma'am, please. This was the biggest hit of 2023. When you had Shah Rukh Khan dance to this, and when you created this music, of course in collaboration, because director puts together the big pie, what was it like? Uh, particularly about this song, this song credit goes to Ani and Farah Khan, who really choreographed uh, really well. Uh, Farah did a very good signature, which uh, I think most of the iconic person did, and it became very famous, and uh, thanks to them. Uh, moreover, I want to, uh, can I? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. So I want to thank NDTV. Uh, Dreams do come uh, while sleeping, but those are not dreams. The dreams which make you sleepless are the real dream. This is a long time dream <coughs> I had in me. And uh, sorry for taking more. No, no, take more, yeah. take more time. This is much nicer. <laughs> so uh, I'm from Tiruparangundram, Madurai. Okay. From there to Delhi to get this is something else for me. So. Uh, I want to thank everyone who have supported me and I think I have uh, thanked them every now and then in every meetings. But I didn't thank one uh, particular uh, uh, segment. So in which I think this is a very nice dais to thank them. See, <clears throat> when this film was uh, uh, in talks in 2019, uh, Mr. Shah Rukh sir came to Chennai to meet me and he took me to IPL match in 2019. It was CSK versus KKR. So when we were together, a photo came. And out of that photo, just 2% of positivity, congratulations at least, 98% was hatred. Mm. And the hatred is something else. Are you a right person to stand in front of him? Are you a person going to make a film? This is what we can make. <clears throat> so see, fans, yeah, fans are very, very needed. Fans, they love you. But haters, haters are obsessed with you because fans, they talk twice a day, thrice a day. But uh, these haters will talk even in sleep about us. Thank you, haters. And I'm going to thank you for all <laughs> for this. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. That's all I want to mention. God bless and, you. And uh, if Atli can make, I'm just telling to the youngsters, if Atli can make to NDTV uh, Director of the Year, Indian of the Year, then I think anyone can make. Just focus on your dream. Go for it. Thank you. Atli, are you sure you, that you do not want to capture the signature move? Uh, no, Let's make I, one more No, you know, no, ma'am. I, 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 please, ma'am. Please, please, please. <laughs> Slowly, you are positioning me as a mass director. So I want to be in that gesture and I have to leave that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Big congratulations, Atli. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Lovely thank you. talking so, I, to you. I just want to compliment you once again. With that roaring success, you also have a human quality of humility. So God right. bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank God you. bless Thank you. you. Thank God you. bless you, Atli. Thank, Thank you, Puri, sir. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, India's biggest heroes are those 
who put their lives on the line to save the lives of those around them their selfless determination in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles define them as being incredible indians bilkul यकीन नहीं आता कभी जिस तरह से वो अपनी जान को दांव पे लगा के दूसरों की मदद करते हैं उसके लिए अपनी जान को दांव पर लगाते हैं न किसी पुरस्कार की उम्मीद न किसी वाहवाही की तमन्ना ये है हमारे देश के असली हीरो हमारे नायक टू गिव अवे दी अवार्ड टू इंडिया हीरो कॉल ऑन स्टेज एक्टिविस्ट एडवोकेट एंड ऑथर भुवन रिभु द फाउंडर ऑफ चाइल्ड मैरिज फ्री इंडिया कैंपेन एंड the just rights for children and uh, also the former supreme court judge justice sikri welcome onto the stage thank you very much uh, for being with us we'll just uh, bring the envelope across to you if you can just uh, open up uh, the envelope and then read out the winner of this sikri you also said justice sikri joins us sir. on the stage as well thank you sir <laughs> I request you? both of you to uh, announce <laughs> the winners in this category. Aap dono ko bhi photo photo le ke aao. Oh well. How do you uh, say that the Silk Kaira Saviors? Silk Kaira. The Silk Kaira heroes. Silkyara. These were the heroes yes. who saved so many yes. lives and and their own in fact uh, as well when yeah. they dug out of that tunnel in Himachal Pradesh. After the tunnel was blocked, yes. an incredible the rescue. Silkia, the real the heroes from Uttarakhand. Ji, the Silkiara Tunnel. आप सब को याद होगा कि हमने दिनों तक देखा था कुछ लोग फंसे हुए थे टनल के अंदर में और ये लोग थे जिन्होंने आखिर में जहाँ मशीनें फेल कर गई वहाँ पर इन हिम्मत पर लोगों ने हौसला बनाए रखा और इकतालीस फोर्टी वन जिंदगियाँ बचाई जोरदार ताली इन लोगों के लिए सिलकियारा बारकोट सुरंग जहाँ सत्रह दिन तक शौद इकतालीस मजदूर फंसे रहे थे और आखिर में इन्हीं बारह लोगों की मदद से उन्हें एक बार फिर से जिंदगी मिली Tonight we honor the bravery and tenacity of these men who are in every sense India's heroes. A standing ovation for them, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have Vakil Hasan, Munna Qureshi, uh, Nasir Mohammad, Rashid Mohammad, uh, Ishad, and we've got Firoz. Uh, we've got um, Nasiruddin and Kalimuddin who are on the stage. Kalimullah, receiving Ji. the stage. Kalimullah with this award. बहुत बहुत बधाई आप तमाम लोगों को. हमें पता है कि आपने किसी पुरस्कार की चाह में ये काम नहीं किया आपने अपनी जान को दांव पे लगा के ये काम किया और इतने लोगों की इकतालीस लोगों की जाने बचाई हैं बहुत मुबारकबाद आप तमाम लोगों को जी और तमाम आपके आपके हौसले को सलाम इन तमाम लोगों की जो तालियों की गड़गड़ाहट है वो आप लोगों के लिए है आप में से कोई भी अगर जवाब देना चाहें आप तमाम लोग जब उस टनल सुरंग में थे आखिरी दिन इतने लंबे समय से ये काम चल रहा था मशीनें वो काम कर नहीं पाई जो आप लोगों ने आखिरकार किया और आप ही से उम्मीद टिकी थी आपके लिए वो लम्हा कैसा था दबाव महसूस होता था आप में से कोई भी माइक अगर देंगे जी जय हिंद जय भारत जय हिंद ऊपर वाले की कृपा थी जो 145 करोड़ जनता थी उसी उसी का प्यार उसी की मोहब्बत थी जो हमें इतना हौसला मिला क्योंकि 145 करोड़ जनता जो दुआएं कर रही थी उन्हीं की दुआओं से ये काम हुआ है इंसान क्या कर सकता है सभी का प्यार और मोहब्बत थे सबने हमें लोगों ने प्यार सम्मान दिया और इंडिया टीवी का भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया अदा करते हैं जो हमें कभी कभी लग रहा था कि ये काम नहीं हो पाएगा मतलब वो टनल का जो स्थिति था जो कंडीशन था वहाँ से मतलब कोई निकल कोई बाहर नहीं आ पाएंगे सबको नमस्कार सबको जय हिंद हम मेरे दोस्त हैं वकील हसन जिन्होंने हमें फ़ोन करा था भाई मुन्ना इकतालीस लोग फंसे हुए हैं क्योंकि हमें इतना टाइम तो मिलते नहीं अपने बच्चे संभालें या भाई कहाँ देखें हमें न्यूज व्यूज देखने की इतनी अब देखना ज़्यादा चालू कर दिया क्योंकि हमारा भी फोटो आता उसमें <laughs> उस टाइम देखते नहीं थे तो भैया ने बताया मेरे को हमने इकतालीस लोग फंसे हुए मैंने बोलने लगे वहाँ पे बहुत बहुत बड़ी बड़ी मशीनें फेल हो गई तो मैंने भैया आप वीडियो मंगा लीजिए और हम चलेंगे ज़रूर उस काम को देखेंगे जब इन्होंने वीडियो मंगाई थी तो मैंने इनसे कह दिया था भैया हम कर लेंगे उसे और 24 घंटे में करके आ जाएँगे हम वापस उस काम वैसे हमारी पूरी टीम थी और हमें बहुत उम्मीदें थी 
और हम उन्हें वहाँ पे भी हमने जाके कहा था चौबीस से छत्तीस घंटे में उन्हें बाहर ले लेंगे हम मगर वही वाला हिसाब है ज़्यादातर आज के टाइम में डिप्लोमा पे वो भरोसा किया जाता है तजुर्बे पे कम कर रहे हैं क्योंकि डिप्लोमा डिप्लोमा होता है <laughs> बहुत कमाल की बात कही आपने डिप्लोमा पे भरोसा ज़्यादा तजुर्बे पे कम आप में से कोई और भी क्या जोड़ना चाहेंगे इस पर बात आप, आप में से कोई भी बोलना चाहें जय हिंद हेलो एवरी मुझे बहुत खुशी हो रही है कि इंडियन ऑफ द ईयर अवार्ड मुझे इस प्लेटफॉर्म से दिया जा रहा है लेकिन एक मुझे थोड़ा दुख है इस चीज़ का हमने अपनी जान दांव पर लगाई है अपने देश के लिए और आज मेरे साथ ये हालात है कि ये मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा मैं इस अवार्ड को रखूँगा कहाँ पे क्योंकि मेरा घर तोड़ दिया गया था अभी पता नहीं क्यों डी करप्शन की वजह से कहीं भी कोई सुनवाई नहीं है मैं आपके माध्यम से कहना चाहता हूँ कि मुझे मेरा घर लौटाया जाए ओके भुवन जी ये तमाम लोग जो हमारे साथ यहाँ पर हैं ये वो लोग हैं जिन्होंने ज़मीन पर जाके काम किया और आपसे मैं जानना चाहती हूँ आप ऐसे लोगों के साथ लगातार काम करते हैं जो ज़मीन से जुड़े हैं आप बाल विवाह रोकने के लिए आपकी कोशिश जारी है तो ये जो ज़मीन काम करते हैं कितने ज़रूरी हैं किसी भी मुहिम के लिए मैं तो यहाँ तक कहूँगा कि ये मुहिम के लिए नहीं देश के लिए समाज के लिए विश्व के लिए ज़रूरी है और इनका होना न केवल हम सबको ताकत देता है बल सब बल्कि हम सबके लिए प्रेरणा का स्रोत है जी। आ, मैं एन को खास तौर पे इसका धन्यवाद दूंगा क्योंकि इस तरह के लोगों को इस तरह के मंचों पे लाकर ये बता पाना सारे देश को कि यही असली नायक हैं यही असली हीरो हैं यही वो लोग हैं अभी थोड़ी देर पहले हमारे डायरेक्टर साहब के साथ हम एक फिल्म की चर्चा कर रहे थे हमारे सनी देओल साहब यहाँ बैठे हुए हैं ये वो लोग हैं जो जान हथेली पे रखकर टनल में घुसकर एक ऐसे चीज को बदलने में कामयाब हुए जिसके बारे में सारे विश्व ने हार मान ली थी तो मैं जो भाई साहब कह रहे थे कि दुआओं का असर डिग्रियों से ज्यादा होता है ये इसका सबसे बड़ा जीता जागता उदाहरण है और इससे अगर हम सीख सके सब कह सकते हैं कि यह संभव नहीं है लेकिन हर असंभव को संभव बनाने का काम हमारे देश के गांव गांव में शहर शहर में ऐसे लोग कर रहे हैं जिन्होंने असंभव शब्द को सुना ही नहीं जी। आपने बाल विवाह संबंधी मुझसे पूछा स्पेशली अभी कुछ दिन पहले संयुक्त राष्ट्र ने यूनाइटेड नेशंस ने कहा कि बाल विवाह खत्म करने में 300 साल लगेंगे इट विल टेक थ्री हंड्रेड ईयर्स एक और एजेंसी ने कहा कि भारत को बाल विवाह खत्म करने में 2050 तक हम 6 परसेंट पे पहुंचेंगे आपके जैसे ऐसे लोगों को मैं जानता हूं जिन्होंने 415 जिलों में एक नॉन गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने गांव गांव में जाके ये मुहिम चलाई और भारत में हर साल हो रहे 12 लाख बाल विवाहों में से साठ हजार तीन महीने के भीतर रोक दिए अगर इसी गति से हम चलते रहे तो 2050 नहीं 2030 में बाल विवाह का खात्मा हो जाएगा ये हम कर सकते हैं ये भारत के लोगों में ये ताकत है Absolutely. और इसके लिए हमें किसी दुनिया के सर्टिफिकेट की जरूरत नहीं है आई ऑल्सो वॉन्टेड टू आस्ट जस्ट सीक्री क्वेश्चन सर द स्पिरिट ऑफ of service um, even if it comes at enormous peril uh, the fact that we've got real heroes over here who didn't didn't think about their own lives to try and save the lives of others how is this an inspiration which goes beyond just this one story it's something which needs to motivate so many more across our country i think this is one example which uh, inspires everyone each and every citizen of this country because uh, we know your tv was covering yes. when uh, they had gone to the pit and they were trying to save that for it's not few hours it, uh, i mean when it is 30 40 50 hours i think it took and uh, uh, all the channels were covering as i said your channel was covering and what we were watching at that time a thing which was almost we thought as uh, bhuvan has also said is impossible it can't be achieved and uh, therefore making something which is virtually impossible and turning into possible and succeeding in that 
that is one inspiration for everybody and uh, so therefore according to me these are the real heroes real heroes of our country and we are proud of all of them Ji. indeed and we are yes. thank you so, very I'm, much I'm thank you for joining with us really and uh, you are sharing your thoughts ji jai hind ye hame jo hero kaha ja raha hai ye bahut bura sa lagta hai sunkar hame kyunki aaj bhi hum zero hain हमारे बारे में अगर हमारे साथ देखोगे ना आप हमें तो बस क्या बोलूँ मैं अंदर से कुछ निकल नहीं रहा है इतने इतने परेशान कर दिया है हमें हीरो बुरा मत मानना आप लोग नहीं 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 कोई बात नहीं आप बोलिए हीरो कह कह कर हीरो कह कह कर हमें इतना परेशान कर दिया है हमारे घर पे मोहल्ले वाले जब हमें काम करते हुए देखते हैं ना आप ठीक तो ये बोलते हैं तुम हीरो ये हीरो हैं वो हम मजदूरी कर रहे हैं आज भी हम अपनी मजदूरी छोड़ गए हैं आज हमें रिक्वेस्ट करके बुलाया गया था जितने भी ना हम सारे किसी पे पहली बात तो घर अपना नहीं है ठीक है एक हमारे वकील हसन थे उनका भी घर तोड़ दिया वो भी रोड पे आ चुके हैं ये अवार्ड जो है ना बच्चे होते तो बहुत खुश हैं हमें देखकर कि हमारे पापा यहाँ जाते हैं वहाँ जाते हैं वहाँ मिलते हैं हम अब ये लेकर जाएंगे जी। और जरूर आपके साथ हम बात करेंगे पर आप आप लोगों ने जो किया है वहाँ उसके बारे में हम बात कर रहे हैं और यू आर एब्सोलूट हीरो और आप जो कह रहे हैं ये जरूर हम आपके साथ इस बारे में बात करेंगे ये अलग बात करेंगे सर वो आपको बताइए हमने क्या किया है इकतालीस लोगों की जान बचाई है अपनी जान हथेली पर रखकर और आप लोग की दुआओं से ऊपर वाले ने हमें जरिया बना के भेजा था मगर एक किसी का जरिया देखो मेरे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है इतना बड़ा अवार्ड मेरे को मिला है एनडीटीवी की तरफ से मैं शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ जी मगर मैं आज आठ बाई दस के कमरे में रहता हूँ एक और मेरे वकील हसन साहब का घर था वो तोड़ दिया नहीं तो मैं यही सोचता था उसी घर में ले जाके रखूंगा इस अवार्ड को मगर वो भी तोड़ दिया गया जी तो मुझे बहुत अफसोस की बात है उसके लिए भी हमारा मुद्दा उठाया जाए और जरूर हम इस बारे में बात करेंगे बट टूडे फॉर रेल हीरो दूध मांगोगे खीर देंगे कश्मीर मांगोगे चीर देंगे ऐसे ही मैंने कहा था मैं पहाड़ में से 24 से 36 घंटे में सब निकाल के बाहर ले आएंगे हम तो सन्नीपा जी हमारे घर तो मैं आपके साथ में जरूर बात करूंगा बाहर आ जाते आप आप लोगों ने जो किया है उसके बारे में बात करें कब नहीं बहुत बहुत आप सबको धन्यवाद देते हैं बहुत जी हमारी कोशिश यही है कि हम आपने जो काम किया उसको एक बार फिर से दुनिया के सामने लाएं आप सबको सम्मानित करें और आपके काम को बार बार याद किया जाए और हमारी हम पूरी तरह से आपकी भावनाओं को समझते हैं और हमारी यही कोशिश रहेगी कि आगे भी किसी ना किसी तरह से हम आपकी इन मुश्किलों को और आगे बढ़ाएं ताकि लोगों को उसके बारे में जानकारी हो सनी देओल हमारे साथ यहाँ पर स्टेज पर आप लोगों के साथ में है अगर सनी अगर आप कुछ कहना चाहें लोगों से गेट द माइक <laughs> okay thank you so much thank Shabs. you thank you thank thanks you a lot thank you, thank you. ji bhuvan can we just uh, this thing we've got other things coming up we'll just chat in a moment kab sabko manni chahiye aur sani pa ji hamare itne zyada jo hai emotional hai kab seva kabhi kisi badle ki ya kisi cheez ki bhavna se nahi hoti aur aaj jo humne seva ki un logon ke bare mein sochiye jinki duaon se जिनके घर वाले आप जो जिंदा हैं आज आपकी वजह से पहले ये सोचिए और उसके बाद आपकी जो जिम्मेदारी है वो हम सब जी थैंक यू थैंक्स अलॉट भुवन जी फॉर दोज वर्ड्स एंड थैंक यू टू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू द सेवियर्स ऑफ सिल्क टनल एंड वी कंग्रेचुलेट यू वंस अगेन वी वुड डेफिनेटली ट्राई एंड ब्रिंग आप द प्रॉब्लम दैट यू स्टिल आर फेसिंग थैंक यू सो मच
उन्हीं बच्चों को उसी परिश्रम के लिए बच्चों को ज़रा हौसला वर्धन कर दें क्योंकि कईयों के इम्तिहान चल रहे हैं अगर आप उनसे कुछ कहना चाहें आज तो देखिए सारे बच्चे जितने हैं बहुत होशियार हैं उन्हें किसी अनसोलिसिटेड एडवाइस की ज़रूरत है नहीं बट uh, मैं इतना ही कहना चाहूँगा जो हमने फिल्म में कहा है कि अगर आप ईमानदार हैं अगर आप इन द फेस ऑफ एडवर्सिटी इफ़ यू कैन होल्ड योर ओन एंड नॉट गिव अप जो श्री अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी की कविता हमने फिल्म में कही है हार नहीं मानूंगा रार नहीं ठानूंगा काल के कपाल पर लिखता मिटाता हूँ गीत नया गाता हूँ अगर हम सब मिल के ये विचारधारा रखेंगे तो जिस रास्ते पर हम ऑलरेडी चल चुके हैं आई एम श्योर इट्स ओनली गोइंग टू गेट बेटर विद टाइम एंड द ब्यूटिफुल कंट्री द ग्लोरियस कंट्री दैट वी आर वी आर डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू मूव टूवर्ड्स बेटर फ्यूचर वॉट आर फैसिनेटिंग मैसेज फॉर द इवनिंग थैंक यू सो मच विक्रांत थैंक यू फैसिनेटिंग थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच The last woman of worth and achievement that we want to introduce tonight is every woman. It's me, it's you. It's the woman at the bus stand, the one selling vegetables. It's the mothers and sisters, the farm workers, the laborers, the healthcare workers in villages and the women commanding the cockpit. It's each one of us who make up 48% of India's population. The real transformative power in India lies in the hands of India's women. Economic empowerment for women, participation in decision making, equity in communities and in workplaces, the potential benefits are enormous and transformative both for women and society. So we're celebrating all the women here each one of you. And from all the men for that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen bringing to you the next category climate change it is the biggest issue today that the world is facing and the, particularly the future generation and even today and it's a subject that has dominated headlines in the past year in particular consumers brands corporations have made efforts towards ensuring that there is a system which is created which is conscious and simultaneously what we have seen is that there are certain young activists and authoritarian influencers who have launched their battle cry on social media rallying support apne uh, go green save green ek ped lagao bhavishya bachao is tarah ke naare hum sab ne kai baar sune honge hum log jalvayu parivartan ko lekar chintit bhi rehte hain yaro doston ke sath khub baat cheet bhi karte hain apne aas paas hariyali ko lekar pareshan bhi rehte hain par kya aapne kabhi khud socha hai ki aapne kya kiya सोचिएगा जरूर तब तक के लिए मैं आगे बढ़ता हूं हो सकता है कि हम में से कुछ लोग पर्यावरण के लिए जलवायु के लिए बचाए रखने के लिए स्वस्थ हवा में सांस रखने के लिए अपने अपने स्तर पर कुछ काम भी करते होंगे एनडीटीवी के लिए भी इन्वायरमेंट क्लाइमेट चेंज जलवायु परिवर्तन मानवता को बचाए रखने का एक ऐसा विषय है जो हम सबके बहुत करीब है हम एन परिवार की तरफ से तो प्रयास करते ही हैं लेकिन जो लोग जलवायु परिवर्तन से बढ़ते खतरे को बताने और लोगों को जागरूक करने का काम करते हैं अपने इस मंच पर हम उनको सम्मानित करना नहीं भूलते हैं टू गिव अवे दर्ड फॉर क्लाइमेट इन्फ्लुएंसर ऑफ द वर्ड ऑफ द ईयर आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल ऑन द स्टेज सानिया मिर्जा सानिया के लिए तालियां Thank you Sanya. Thank you so much. Please announce you have the envelope and the mic. Um and the award goes to Prajakta Kohli. Not much of a surprise there she is mostly sane. Congratulations how... Prajakta. Aap logo ne Prajakta ko bahut TV pe OTT pe content mein khub dekha hoga. Big congratulations Prajakta. आप सब पहचानते होंगे लेकिन ये जलवायु परिवर्तन को लेकर भी बहुत बड़ा काम कर रही हैं, बहुत 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 मुबारक उपरा जगता और अपने अंदाज में कर रही हैं, शायद इसीलिए बहुत ही एसेंशियल है कि जो आपका रोल है जो यूथ का रोल है इन्फ्लुएंसर्स के स्पेस में 
एक अपने अंदाज में बताना मोस्टली सेन रह करके गॉड oh <laughs> सबसे पहले तो थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू एन डी टी वी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स सच एन ऑनर टू बी इन अ रूम विद ऑल दीज पीपल मैं कुशा से भी वही बोल रही थी मैं जितना लेट आएगा उतना मुझे बुरा लगेगा बिकॉज एवरी वन उज कमिंग बिफॉर मी इज जस्ट डूइंग सच इनक्रेडिबल वर्क विच इज सो इंस्पायरिंग एंड आई फील वेरी वेरी ग्रेटफुल दैर आई गेट टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दीज रूम्स विच हैव सच इन्फ्लुएंशियल कॉन्वर्जेशन हैपनिंग आई एम वेरी ग्रेटफुल थैंक यू सारिया दिस इज सच अ मोमेंट एंड my conversation with climate action actually started do 3 saal pehle and i remember uh, when undp and i kind of got together my first question to them was i have not done any work in this why do you want me to be a youth climate champion uh, so the first few months were actually just understanding the role that i would play as a creator in this fight that we have against climate and uh, very quickly i realized thanks to my audience thanks to this country that we are a part of that empowers creators like me to actually have a voice i'm very proud to be from an economy that kind of gives us a platform to speak about things that matter to us and eventually realize that creators have a huge role to play even if it's just taking important complicated conversations and breaking them down into tiny pieces so our audience can understand so i uh, am very very grateful for this position that i have in this and uh, thank you ntv thank you so much projecta ek sawal chhota sa kya kaam zyada aasan hai acting karna ya environment ke liye awareness create karna dono bhi aasan nahi hai dono ke alag alag challenges hai par mazedar hai क्या चैलेंजेस फेस करती हैं जब आप खासकर अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करने की कोशिश करती हैं एनवायरनमेंट को लेके सबसे बड़ी चैलेंज तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि कॉन्वर्सेशन इतना कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है जितनी भी बार आई मीन आई आई हैव द प्रिविलेज ऑफ बीइंग इन डावर्स वे स्मृति मैम वो स्पीकिंग एंड आई रिमेंबर लिसनिंग टू हर टॉक एट द नंबर फाइव डिनर जेंडर इक्वालिटी डिनर एंड आई रिमेंबर बहुत टाइम बाद आई हर्ड सम वन स्पीक सो सिंपली उन्होंने जितना बोला मुझे सब समझ में आया क्योंकि हमेशा मैं गूगल करती रहती थी कि इसका मतलब क्या है उसका मतलब क्या है आई वॉज सिटिंग इन गूगलिंग ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन मैंने कहा हाउ एव आई वर्क इन क्लाइमेट एक्शन आई डोंट नो अबाउट ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन इट्स शेमफुल बट आई एम ऑलवेज गूगलिंग सो आई थिंक स्टोरी टेलिंग बट इवन मोर सिंपल स्टोरी टेलिंग इज इम्पॉर्टेंट लाइक एवरी टाइम आई विल लीव Thank you. Every yeah. time I will leave, there'll be conversation saying very nice project. But like SDGs, what is it? Very nice project. But like net zero, what is it? So I think the uh, most important challenge is that the conversations are very many, big numbers, graphs, and pie charts. But most of us don't understand what that means. So I feel like if we could just simplify a little bit more, it'll be easier to understand and act on it. And if you were to give some uh, climate management tips to this audience oh in a God. simple way. waste segregation don't litter please don't use single use plastics and recycle thank you so much on that note thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much Sanya. thank you and so thank much you. thank you thank you and congratulations for the award thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. bye project chali aur aaiye ab aaj ke sham ka wo pal aa gaya hai jiska aap puri sham se intezar kar rahe the 3 4 ghanton se yahan baithe hue hain hum baat kar rahe hain aaj ke mukh award ki NDTV Indian of the Year कौन होगा वो क्या लगता है आप लोगों को कोई व्यक्ति होगा कोई शख्सियत होगा कोई इंस्टीट्यूशन होगा क्योंकि इस तरह के अवार्ड्स दिए गए हैं पास में तो वो कौन सा इंस्टीट्यूट है वो कौन सा तो इसीलिए हम थोड़ा ऑडियंस से सवाल पूछते हैं हाँ। ओसामा और अरुण वहां पर हैं ऑडियंस से जरा सवाल पूछते हैं कि इंडियन ऑफ द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री क्या कौन होना चाहिए जरा सवाल पूछिए ऑडियंस से व्यू लिया जाए चेक चेक Hi, am I audible? Let's check, take check, an check. audience poll. Hello, check. hello, hello. Good, good. I'm good. I'm good. Yes. Hello. I'm back, and let's have some answers from you guys. Have we revealed you. anything right there? <laughs> I think women. It's all there. It's. So, no, no, no. Women, he is, and I think it's a proud moment for all women. तो एक बार जोरदार तालिया हर एक महिला के लिए जिसने हमें इंस्पायर किया है यस सो इट्स बुला लेट मी लेट लेट मी गेट मैडम स्मृति ईरानी जी ऑन द स्टेज टू गिव अवे द वॉर फॉर एन ई टी वी इंडियन ऑफ द ईयर लेट्स हैव यूनियन मिनिस्टर स्मृति ईरानी ऑन द स्टेज एंड प्लीज लैला तैयब जी founder member and chairperson of dastakar and padma shri award is someone who has worked on the revival of traditional crafts in india for years and years let that let her come let her come please run yes please go ahead yes 
You have to go ahead. <laughs> so the Indian of the year are the women of India. आप लोग बिल्कुल ठीक थे सुवर्णा जी कि किसी महिला को ही मिलेगा सब महिलाओं को मिला है हर भारतीय महिला को मिला है इस साल की विनर है 2023 की हिंदुस्तान की हर एक महिला हम इनवाइट करना चाहेंगे स्टेज पर बारी बारी से नैनालाल किदवई जी को प्लीज मैम आइए रिप्रेजेंट करिए इंडियन वीमेन को हम बुलाना चाहेंगे स्कॉडन लीडर निकिता मल्होत्रा को निकिता प्लीज कम ओवर द स्टेज हम इन्वाइट करना चाहेंगे सुवर्णा मैम को सुवर्णा मैम फिर से आपको तकलीफ देंगे एक बार फिर आप मंच पर आइए सानिया मिर्जा प्लीज आप सब हिंदुस्तान की महिलाओं को रिप्रेजेंट करती हैं अपनी अपनी विधाओं की महारती हैं और इससे अच्छा ऑनर हमारे लिए एनडीटीवी के लिए क्या होगा कि आप सबको हम एक साथ सम्मानित कर सकें पुरस्कृत कर सकें इसरो वुमेन प्रोजेक्ट ऑल ऑफ देम सबको बोल दीजिए हमारे साथ शानू बेगम भी मौजूद हैं शानू बेगम आई रिक्वेस्ट यू प्लीज क्या मैम प्लीज प्लीज आई ऊपर मंच पे आइए प्राजक्ता ज्वाइन अस एज वेल ऑन द स्टेज इट्स सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी वुमेन हु इज प्रेजेंट इन दिस हॉल टुडे प्लीज क्या प्राजक्ता यस मैम प्लीज लेट्स सेलिब्रेट साइंस इस टीम इसरो द टीम इसरो प्लीज कम स्मृति मैम मैम स्मृति मैम ये ट्रॉफीज एक एक करके आपको ट्रॉफीज देना हो हाँ जी यस यहां देना पड़ेगा सुवर्णा जी जी हाँ हाँ क्यों नहीं नेहा नेहा जी आप हैं क्या हॉल में नेहा जी आपको मंच पे बुलाया जा रहा है सुवर्णा जी ने स्पेशल रिक्वेस्ट की है प्लीज प्लीज मैम Let me begin with you Smriti ma'am 2023 the year of women I think the amalgam of women here from all walks of life all generations is what being indian and being an indian woman is all about so they deserve the mic not me i can only say congratulations ndtv finally somebody has woken up to the power of Indian women and declared them. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Next question is coming to you. Why only for this year, but in perpetuity? I think their talent is to be celebrated. To all the Indian women at home or overseas who are watching, congratulations. Lela, ma'am, एक सवाल भी आप से है. कैसा लग रहा है आपको इन महिलाओं के बीच में एक साथ खड़ा होके सब बातें? Feels wonderful. Feels really wonderful. You speak on mic, ma'am, please. Feels absolutely wonderful. but i think it must be quite scary as well for some people in the audience <laughs> because now that women have escaped the cage of societal prejudice and stereotypes nothing is going to stop us Word from you as well thank you ma'am and i think hame roz aaine mein जैसे मैं मैं खुद को ये नियम अपनाती हूँ मैं आईने में एक बार खुद को देख के जरूर बोलना चाहिए आई एम फिनोमिनल आई थिंक जो आपको वाइब्स ये देते हैं ना वो बहुत अच्छा जी आपने बड़ी अच्छी बात की मैं चाहूंगा एक स्टैंडिंग ओवेशन इन सब के लिए बनता है जोरदार तालियां थैंक यू आप सबसे रिक्वेस्ट है भारतीय महिलाओं के लिए हिंदुस्तान की हर एक महिला को रिप्रेजेंट कर रही है एनडीटीवी इंडिया के मंच पे लोग मौजूद हर महिला थैंक यू सो थैंक यू सो मच I would request uh, the women here to share their thoughts Naina Lal ke very beginning with you I think uh, that we are now finally in an era where women can rise to their full potential 
that we're here to celebrate women across so many fields, women leaders who truly matter, women leaders who are the India of today and tomorrow. So congratulations to everyone. And so happy to be here in everyone's midst. Thank you so much, ma'am. Squadron leader Nikita, your thoughts? I would just like to say, if the president of India can be a woman, a woman can reach everywhere. So, <laughs> way to go. How fantastic. Sanya. Well, this is working, yes. 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 Um, well, thank you very much. Uh, it's, a, it's truly an honor to be standing with such incredible achievers, but especially the women achievers, and I may be biased here, but um, we all, as women, try and represent ourselves in the best ways possible in our different fields, in our different eras and generations. And I hope that uh, moving forward, we can all together make this country even greater. And yeah, I think that you know we are already doing quite well, as you can see the stage. So thank you very much. <laughs> Ma'am. Can I have the mic, yeah. please? Uh, yes, yeah. sir. Uh, it's a moment of my life Country. to be standing with all these achievers and uh, honoring us like this. And we have been transformed from supporting role to the leadership because a lot of uh, women leaders are here now and we are going to rock in the coming years. I'm sure. Squadron leader, one question to you. In uniform, the girls were happy to see the girls. How many girls get compliments in uniform? Sir, you should tell me. Yes, sir. 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 It's uh, an honor and it's a proud thing to be in the uniform. She just told me that, ma'am, you're looking very good in the uniform. So obviously, um, it's a pride to wear the uniform and serve the country. And Shannu Begum. Shannu Begum. Your thoughts? How do you feel? What do you want to say? I'll say Hindi, but I understand that I don't talk to my own language. I don't talk to my own language, because I talk to my own Hindi. As Sir has said, it's for uniform. So, in school time, I saw Shania Mirzai, and I was growing up, so I thought that I would never be like Shania Mirzai. I would play tennis, but I couldn't play. I was taking a moment that I would play tennis, but 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 I would play tennis, मैं इतनी खुश हुई थी कि मैं बता नहीं सकती उस खुशी का पल क्या था और आज भी मैं अपनी यूनिफॉर्म में ही निकलती हूँ वैसे कि मैं एहसास फाउंडेशन करके अपनी मैंने एक एहसास फाउंडेशन बनाई है जिसमें मैं लड़कियों को ड्राइविंग और कंडक्टर की ट्रेनिंग देती हूँ अभी मैं जॉब नहीं करती बेसिकली मैं अभी भी यूनिफॉर्म ही पहनती हूँ सारे लोग बोलते हैं मेरे बच्चे भी बोलते हैं कि आप यूनिफॉर्म कैसे पहनती हैं तो मैंने जैसे अभी तुलसी मैम को भी देखा यहाँ पर मैं रिपीट करके तुलसी मैम का नाटक देखती थी अपनी कैब के अंदर बैठ के और मुझे भी ऐसा लगता था कि फैमिली को कवरिंग कैसे करते हैं तो शुक्रे खुदा का कि पूरी फैमिली को लेकर मैं चली हूँ और वो दुख के पल में याद नहीं करती क्योंकि मैं हमेशा खुश रहना चाहती हूँ और खुशियाँ देती हूँ मैं लोगों को और जो मेरे पास लड़कियाँ या लेडी से अभी आती हैं तो मैं सबको कहती हूँ बस खुश रहना सीखो ज़िंदगी अपने आप बदल जाएगी और बदल गई मेरी बहुत ज़िंदगी बदली है आप लोगों ने तो गूगल्स देखते होंगे तो अगर गूगल्स में डालेंगे तो मेरी लाइफ बहुत स्ट्रगल रही लेकिन खुदा का शुक्र है अल्लाह की बहुत रहमत रही है मैंने अपनी ज़िंदगी काफ़ी अच्छे तरीके से बदली है थैंक यू सो मच आप लोगों का सबका आप लोगों की एक सपना था मेरा एक सपना था कि मैं शाइना मिर्जा के साथ खड़ी हूँ और आज रमज़ानों के महीने में लगता है कि मेरी आंखों में आंसू आ जाएंगे मैं शाइना मिर्जा जी के साथ खड़ी हूँ क्या बात है थैंक यू एन डी के लिए मैं दोबारा थैंक्सफुल कर रही हूँ कि एक बार मैंने किसी से किसी बच्ची के लिए हेल्प मांगी थी कि जॉब के लिए वो बहुत नीड में थी उन्होंने मेरी इज्जत रखी एन डी वालों ने उस बच्ची को जॉब भी दी और आज मुझे इतने बड़े सपने से गुजारा कि दो बड़ी हस्तियाँ मेरे सामने खड़ी हैं <laughs> जिन्हों को मैं टीवी में देखती थी आज साक्षात आंखों से देख रही हूँ थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू मैं रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहूँगा स्मृति जी से एक दो कदम आगे आई है दो कदम स्कोर लीडर आप आगे आइए ये ट्रॉफी रह गई है प्लीज वो वेट कर रही है आपका दिस इज वाई यू सो लेट्स हैव अ फोटो 
opportunity first and then uh, ma'am you'll have to deliver the keynote address please yeah that's the indian of the year that is women power we may be coming in different hues doing different things but this is what women of india is they are extremely impactful and powerful in their messaging so this is the message that is coming from the women to all the audience and to the world that women of india is this is the turning point i would say as well and i am the lucky one out here thank you so much thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank you please shruti ji please stay back thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am thank you privilege thank you yes thank you please. so much now i would like to request honorable minister smriti irani for her keynote address ma'am well um i'll only say this it is an absolute privilege to stand in an audience that celebrates capacity at a time where there's a cacophony politically across the country i would just like to not only congratulate the women who have received this honor the men who have excelled but also i think the girl who's watching all these women celebrate their excellence my message is this Today you saw an actor stand before you taking a prize for being tenacious and for being true to his craft. Today you saw a sporting legend not only give away awards but you also saw on this stage a woman who was enabled scientifically administratively to study the sun namely the Aditya L1 mission. Today you saw a woman who drives a cab runs an NGO you saw a legendary female banker a legendary female handcrafts person who's also a sari connoisseur you saw women who have served in the indian armed forces and this is the message for the girl who's listening to all of us this evening say thank you to the naysayers i do because 31 years ago to this date i walked up to a one storied office in a place called east of kailash in delhi at the age of 17 my only dream was to be a part of a channel called ndtv <laughs> this scruffy little man who met me at the gate not only told me to take a hike but also told me that vagabonds like me do not belong amongst the pristine so to all the naysayers young ladies see a big thank you <laughs> but today as uh, forest gump would say if anybody has seen the movie life is like a box of chocolates you never know what blows you to kingdom come So as we celebrated social media influencers like Kusha like Prajakta we had an air force officer stand proudly in uniform Now the supreme commander of the armed forces is a lady is a matter of great joy is a matter of great pride but the fact that we still have much of a distance to travel was also exhibited this young officer in uniform was asked how do men look at her compliment her because she wears a uniform and that young girls is a message for you back home know that what you wear will not determine what you achieve know the naysayers will not determine what path you take know your power and determine your destiny the women on this stage today the indians on this stage today have only one message for the young girl at home that when they think of flying to the moon they think of the indian woman 
When they think of the armed forces, they also think of the Indian woman. When they look at the president, they think of a woman. And when they look at the prime minister, they look at a champion of all things that women need to achieve their dreams, their ambitions, their goals. So if you're a champion of the ordinary Indian woman, from me, you have my gratitude. For in your championship, in your support, you are shaping equity and equality. Gratitude, NDTV. As Vikrant said, life comes full circle. Who knew 31 years ago, somebody who was shooed away by the security guard would come here and present the Indian of the year. And that, young ladies, is the story of every Indian woman. Know that when you're written off, that is when life really begins. Congratulations, well done, and proud of you. Thank you, much, thank you so much for that, Smriti ji, and uh, thank you so much for being here, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching NDTV Indian of the Year, presented by Poonawala FinCorp, co-powered by Ambuja Cement and ACC, associate sponsors, Darwin Platform Group of Companies and Games 24-7, and special partner, Motorola. Now, I'd like to invite everyone to join us for dinner.